Well, a uh, very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Mosham Bhattacharya, Assistant Professor and HOD in charge of the Department of Human Physiology at Government Degree College, Dharmanagar in Tripura. And I would like to welcome all the dear participants, respected dignitaries and eminent resource person who have joined with us in this virtual platform for the national webinar on role of material science in health and medicine jointly organized by the Department of Chemistry, Department of Human Physiology, and Department of Physics in association with the healthcare center of our college. We would be much happier if we could have welcomed and met you all at our beautiful college campus, which is located in the beautiful small subdivision town of Dharmanagar in the northern part of our state. But Dear participants, uh, nevertheless, as we all know that due to this COVID-19 pandemic situation, all our educational institutes are uh, running in the online mode. Hence, we have no other option but to continue this session on a virtual platform. Now, dear participants, we have amongst us one of the leading educationists and visionary of our state, Professor Urunada Shaha, former Honorable Vice-Chancellor of Tripura University, who is also presently the Vice-Chairman of the State Higher Education Council in Tripura as the inaugurator of this webinar. Sir, I welcome you to this virtual platform. We have amongst us Dr. Shudhan Devnath, Principal in Charge, Netaji Shubhas Mohavid Dalaya, Udaipur, who is also an Associate Professor in Chemistry as the special guest of the webinar. Sir, I also welcome you to this webinar. Dear participants, we have amongst us Professor Anthony Gomes, former professor at the Department of Physiology, University of Calcutta, who is a role model for many of his students, including me, as the keynote speaker of this national webinar. Sir, I welcome you also to this virtual session. We have amongst us our invited speakers, Dr. Subhito Shaha, uh, assistant Professor in Physiology at Amity Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences, Amity University, Noida. Dr. Deva Prasad Markadeyan, MD, DM in Neuromedicine at Faculty of Medicine, Chetina Academy of so Research and Education, Chennai. And Dr. Oporinita Das, MBBS, Faculty of Medicine at Chetina Academy of Research and Education in Chennai. Dear sirs and madam, I welcome you all to this virtual platform. I welcome all the research scholars who will be sharing their research work with us in this national webinar. Last but not the least, I welcome our very own principal in charge, sir, and president of this national webinar, Sri Gautam Dash, who have been constantly supporting us in organizing this webinar. Dear participants, the main objective of this... Dear participants, the main objective of this two days national webinar is to disseminate the knowledge about the latest scientific advancements in the field of material science and its application in medical science. This field has become immensely beneficial for creating better biocompatible biomaterials for the development of newer drugs, vaccines, new techniques for cancer treatment, reproductive physiology disorders, and many more. The webinar also aims to bring a collaborative approach between physiologists, biotechnologists, medical professionals, physicists, and chemists in order to find out innovative solutions against many diseases. I am sure that the participants will gain a lot from this webinar, which will in turn help them in their future career. With these few words, I once again welcome you all to this two days national webinar and hope that you will enjoy listening to our eminent speakers. Well, now I would like to request our very own and respected Professor Urunadar Shaha to inaugurate the webinar with his kind deliberation. Sir, uh, the platform is all yours. Uh, is Konkon is uh, Professor Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. We can we can hear you, sir. 
sir, we would like to request okay. uh, you to kindly okay. inaugurate the webinar. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to be with you this morning uh, in connection with the inauguration of your program. The theme is the role of medical sciences in health and medicine, material sciences, sorry. The role of, the role of material sciences in health and medicines organized by Department of Chemistry, Human Physiology and Physics of Dharmanagar Degree College in association with the Health Center, Dharmanagar Degree College. I am really, really privileged. Uh, I congratulate Dharmanagar College degree college particularly for this kind of endeavor to have webinar national seminar on these urgent pressing issues. I also big thanks from our side because during COVID-19 and other pandemic situations prevailing, we are actually a brave and courageous effort. We come out with the alternative of holding this kind of seminar. I once again congratulate Dharmanagar Degree College for their effort and you know organizing this kind of webinar. Dr. Sudipta Saha and I am delighted to know and I can listen Dr. Ganeshan Jyotimani. Dr. Mal, Professor Deba Prasad Markandan, Dr. Meena Bhatia, and Dr. Harsha Ganeshan. Harsha Ganeshan. They are so nice and kind that they, they are with us. I like to, to convey my best wishes to all of them due to their participation and due to their presence. Our program has become national. Actually, with just the who is presenting over the entire program is Otom Das. I like to convey my thanks to him also, and I would rather request him uh, next time when they are going to have this kind of webinar national seminar. Uh, they may think of international seminar because there is no bar there is no geographic barrier our friends and colleagues and faculties from southeast south india are with us well, you can also try to have you know faculty researchers scientists from abroad so then it will it will become truly international so that is my request to the president and to through principal gautam das to others, Sumon, Ankan, Mosume, all, all. You are doing good job. I like to uh, put on records our sincere appreciation for this kind of organizing national webinar seminar. Anyway, uh, let, let me get back to the main theme, the role of material sciences in health and medicine. Uh, actually, my background is far, far from this material science. Uh, I am a student of economics. But I see that life without the help and support of material science, we cannot even survive. So it is a question of survival. Yes, in, in recent 
scientific advances in application of material sciences in designing and synthesizing new material sciences for development of COVID vaccine, treatment of cancer, implication in reproductive physiology, betterment of health. These are very much correlated. These are very much interdependent. So this seminar, this webinar, national seminar organized by uh, Dharmanagar Degree College aims to amalgamate the diverse field of chemistry, physics, human physiology, and medicines in common platform so that it may help find better solution in the management of diseases. Oh yes, we are, you know, right now under this pandemic situation for last around two years, we are uh, suffering like anything. Our school, colleges, the other institutions, the offices, they have come to stop. Economy is nose diving. So in this situation, our priority is to find out a solution for the remedy of COVID-19, COVID. How to do that? Yes, we look looking forward to the, you know, the stakeholders, like scientists, like doctors, like researchers to come up with some solution. I, we are very hopeful that yes, you will be possible and very soon because we have uh, with us talented, gifted uh, <clears throat> so very soon, any day whole things will be solved. I remember I, I remember just uh, when I was a kid, we, uh, we, we came to know uh, about Ronald Ross. Ronald Ross. Uh, this name may not be so known to our people of our, uh, this present generation. But uh, Ronald Ross was a very famous uh, personality. Uh, I mean, uh, he... he, he the Nobel laureate, and he won the Nobel laureate in Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1992 for treatment of malaria. At that time, there was pandemic situation due to the emergence of malaria. A lot of people, you know, were dying uh, across the world. And interestingly, Ronald Ross was born in, uh, uh, you know, in India. I didn't know that. He was born in uh, in UP, I mean, uh, Uttara, Uttara, Almora in, 19, in 1857. Not going back, he was born and brought up here and then he returned to UK and studied there, joined army, he was made general. But at that time, there was malaria, you know, uh, and people were dying. So he started working on the solution of malaria in India, in South India, in, in Calcutta also. In the laboratory, he collected the, uh, you know, parasite, malaria parasite. And then he found out the solution of malaria and, the, you know, uh, we were saved saved in the sense a lot of people died but once that discovery was done by sir ronald ross and the mankind was saved and i remember you know they claim during world war ii a lot of people died in the war field yes we are very much uh, anxious we are very much afraid you know huge uh, army uh, you know soldiers they died during the war and all that, but caused you know deaths in the war of Second World War. Actually, death due to Second World War is less than death due to malaria. You see how pandemic, 
how devastating was the effect of malaria at that time. And now it is the time for COVID and people are dying. But compared to malaria, it is no, no death at all. So we need not be, you know, frustrated. We need not be disappointed. We passed the we passed those, you know, days. And uh, scientists like Sir Ronald Ross came forward with the, you know, the treatment and solution. It is not only for it is not only for malaria. Whenever this kind of pandemic situation arose due to plague, due to influenza, due to this, due to that, ultimately we overcome. We overcome thanks to material sciences. And here I congratulate uh, our you know, organizer. They have chosen a very pertinent, very relevant, very timely theme role of material sciences in health and medicine yes it is the time in the you know endemic situation like this to come together health and medicine practitioners scientists and the doc come this pandemic situation i once again <coughs> uh, i once again uh, like to congratulate for selecting this such this kind of team which is very very relevant for today and we, you will deliver it on that and i personally believe the deliberations through interactions through collaborations what you will provide us with the path how to overcome how to <coughs> win over this you know pandemic situation caused due to covid 19 Anyway, uh, Dharmaloka Degree College always, you know, at the front of, you know, doing all this kind of exposure. Well, once again, I like to thank and congratulate uh, college has a excellent team of faculty, students, teachers visited and I am convinced they are doing an excellent job. So I would once again um, congratulate the um, entire team of Dharmanagar College for holding this time, type of um, theme, uh, I mean uh, 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 role of material sciences in health and medicines. With, with all these words, once again, uh, you know, I put on records uh, my sincere appreciation and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your encouraging words. And thank you for making us remembering the uh, story of the British, famous British medical doctor, Sir Ronald Ross, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for his uh, work on the life cycle of the mal malarial parasite. Uh, sir, your words will encourage us for further uh, uh, for, for pursuing further achievements in, the, in this field and also allied fields. And sir, we hope in the near future you will be, you, you will, uh, be engaged or you, you will show your kindness to be associated with, uh, with us in, in near future also, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You are most welcome. So, so with this, uh, I would like uh, to uh, invite and request uh, our special guest, uh, who is principal in charge of uh, Netaji Shubhas Mahavidyalaya in Udaipur in Tripura, uh, Dr. Shudan Devnath, who is also an associate professor in chemistry, to uh, give his uh, address. Sir, the platform is yours, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, thank you. A very good morning to one and all in the national webinar on the role of material science in human health and medicine, jointly organized by Department of Chemistry, Human Physiology, Department of Physics in association with Health Care Center at Government Degree College, Dharmanagar. Respected President of 
inaugural session and organizing committee a presidency gautam das principal in charge at uh, dharmanagar college respect respected inaugurator professor runodoy shah former vice chancellor tripura university and chairman tripura state higher education council keynote speaker professor antony gom sir uh, former professor department of human physiology university of uh, kolkata he is personally known to me he is a nice speaker as well as excellent researcher in the field of snack venom convener dr mosum bhattacharya department of human physiology coordinators shuman odikari sujit ranjan das ankan uh, shina assistant professor respected invited speakers presenters my dear students uh, i am thankful to the organizers especially shuman for inviting me in this uh, time demanding webinar if we believe charles darwin she said we developed from gorilla or apes we took what nature had available to us we took the materials around us to progress the stone age bronze age and iron ages were all down the materials pick down a pick up and adopted which is uh, feeding into the current digital ages from the beginning of our civilization metals were used for development of weapons and uh, later for uh, infrastructure development but for healthcare and medicine people rely on uh, medicinal plants in india nearly 65% of uh, population in rural, rural areas use ayurvedic and medicinal plants to help or meet their primary health care needs <clears throat> in developing countries also traditional complementary and alternative medicines are becoming more popular nowadays a uh, scenario in the, of indian traditional medicine and health care india more than 1.5 million practitioners are using traditional a uh, medicinal system for he for health health care and medicine more than 7800 manufacturing units are there india occupies less than 2% of global ma global market uh, although we have nearly 7000 plant species india is one of the 12 mega biodiversity country uh, and in uh, uh, 34th biodiversity hotspot in the world The 12 uh, mega diversity uh, uh, among uh, 12 mega diverse biodiversity country is well, India is one of the uh, important country. Northeastern region of our country occupies 7.7 percent of Indian total geographical area and supporting 50 percent of flora and fauna, nearly 8,000 species. The area of Tripura is. Uh, 0.32 percent of total area of India, but still 13 percent of plant species are available in this state. So, uh, in healthcare need before material science, um, plant science uh, I think was uh, important uh, was initially used by uh, people. Nowadays, biomaterials research studying. the fundamental aspects of a broad range of materials designing synthesizing and fabricating novel functional materials and exploring their biomedical and biological applications this includes many discipline including uh, chemistry physics uh, biology engineering electrical engineering pharmaceutical chemistry life science and computational sciences biomaterials incorporated into uh, medical devices have had at least a great and impact on healthcare in the 21st century as have uh, pharmaceuticals virtually all type of materials system have been used in healthcare applications including metal alloys ceramics polymers etc among metal alloys stainless steels cobalt chromium alloys titanium alloys more recently some <coughs> aluminum zinc system these are used as uh, 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 especially in uh, 
in uh, dental dental care uh, something like this uh, in heart tissues metals and alloys alloys also used for fixation of joint and replacement dental applications may allow in uh, allows in various, uh, various alloys uh, like gold amalgam tantalum etc so his uh, recent research trends that will challenge material designers include the development of uh, implantable bio biosensors artificial muscles drug discovery hydrocells wound dressing adhesive tissue uh, augmentation and uh, regeneration skin bone and cartilage applications have been most successful to uh, date but the focus of research is shifting towards tissue engineering organ replacement uh, so using uh, this bio uh, material science in uh, health science life expect expectancy uh, uh, of india may increase now the life expectant expectancy of indians is nearly 70 years or in future uh, if we use med traditional medicine uh, mo uh, modern drug design and material science in uh, health sector uh, i think the life life expectancy of indians may increase uh, far more with these few words uh, i would like to conclude i again thank you to uh, the organizers for organizing such time demanding uh, uh, webinar uh, thank you thank you all well thank you very much sir for your nice words and i am sure that your words will act as a catalyst for us and our students to get engaged in this sort of uh, webinar and this sort of seminars in near future so thank you very much sir well now uh, i would like to request uh, and invite our principal in charge sir of uh, dharmanagar college of government degree college uh, dharmanagar and president of this national webinar uh, sri gautam das to uh, spare his uh, words uh, on this platform sir uh, please good morning to all respected inaugurator of today's national webinar professor arunodoy shah sir former vice chancellor and presently the chairman of tripura state higher education council respected special guest dr sudhan debnar principal netaji subhash mahavidyalay udaipur tripura respected keynote speaker professor anthony gomes former professor university of calcutta convener dr mosom bhattacharji assistant professor and coordinators are dr sumon adhikari assistant professor dr sujit ranjan das assistant professor dr ankan sinha assistant professor all are from government degree college dharmanagar tripura all members of organizing committee all participants my colleagues and my dear students our invited speakers are dr sudipta shah assistant professor mit university noida dr devaprasad markandeyan department of neurology chittinad academy of research and education chennai dr oparamita das faculty of medicine chittinad academy of research and education chennai we have with us ganesh jyotimoni shorubala malayapuramal minu bhatia archak ganeshan all are our invited speakers and all are faculty of allied health and service of chittinad academy of research and education chennai on behalf of government degree college dharmanagar tripura good wishes to all and welcome you on today's national webinar on rule of material science in health and medicine jointly organized by department of chemistry department of physics and department of human physiology in association with healthcare center of government degree college dharmanagar tripura our inaugurated in of today's webinar professor arunodoy shah sir said in his speech that government degree college is continuously performing 
seminars or webinars and sir advise us to conduct international seminar sir we have uh, very recently completed almost more than 27 uh, national and international webinar out of them uh, we have conducted conducted two international seminar also and we will very soon conduct again international seminar sir thank you sir for your suggestion sir also mention uh the runal ross sir uh, regarding the vaccination of malaria thank you sir for your inf good information our special guest our special guest dr devnath sir express his views of the, in this webinar uh regarding the axiom of charles darwin stone age metal infrastructures health and medicine alternative medicines material science and plant science uh, <clears throat> use of material science etc thank you sir uh, for uh, sharing these uh, good informations we know that the material science is a interdisciplinary field involving the properties of matter and its application to various area of applied physics and chemistry and engineering in material science one has to understand materials fundamentally so that new materials with the desired properties can be created the main classes of materials are metal semiconductor ceramics and polymers material science is a crucial to developing and manufacturing medical devices that break the boundaries of what was formerly thought possible high quality material science and engineering provided new platform that underpin novel emergent healthcare technologies that will address unmet patient needs government degree college dharmanagar tripura is very much thankful to all dignitaries as you all accept our invitation and sharing your valuable time with this webinar our invited speakers experts will discuss regarding covid vaccine basics and nanotechnology sperm mortality analysis colon cancer neurological illness and other important topics in this today's national webinar by face which will enrich will update will benefit the knowledge of our participants best wishes to all the participants i hope the grand success of this please national webinar that is on 7th and 8th august 2021 once again thank you all and mm -hmm. wish your good health thank you well thank you very much sir for your uh, kind words and uh, so with this uh, we have come to the end of the morning session the inauguration session of this webinar and now we'll start the scientific session of this webinar so to start with i should uh, give you a, a brief uh, idea about the program schedule so in the morning session uh, of the scientific uh, uh, session we will be having a keynote lecture by professor antony gomes which will be followed by an invited lecture by dr sudipto shaha and uh, after that in the afternoon we will have two oral presentations one by ganeshan jyotimani and one by sarubala malaya perumal so with this we are going to start uh, the scientific session okay so dear participants uh, let me first introduce uh, the keynote speaker of uh, of of this today's uh, webinar professor antony gomes and i feel privileged to introduce to all of you our respected keynote speaker for the webinar professor gomes professor Dr Anthony Gomes is former professor and an UGC emeritus and UGC basic scientific research fellow 
of the Department of Physiology at the University of Calcutta. He had his pre and post doctoral research training on venom and toxins in the Calcutta School of Tropical Medicine. He has been awarded with the prestigious Indian National Science Academy and Japan Society for the Promotion of Science or INSA JSPS Postdoctoral Exchange Program Fellowship to work for his postdoctoral research at Tohoku University, Japan. His research interests include structure and function of toxins, herbal antagonists against venoms, drug development clues from venoms to toxins, nanotoxicology. He has published uh, more than 145 scientific research articles in peer-reviewed national and international journals. He has two national and one United States patent to his credit. He has written several book chapters. And during his tenure, he has guided 32 PhD students. He is a fellow of several Indian societies and associations. Professor Gomes is a member scientist of the Task Force on Venoms and Toxins at the Indian Council of Medical Research or ICMR of the Government of India. He is the past founder and general secretary of the Toxinological Society of India and the founder president of the Association of Bio Biomedical Sciences in Kolkata. He is a main nominee of the Committee for Purpose of Control and Supervision of Experimental Animals or CPCSEA of the Government of India for several prestigious investments. Dear participants, the most interesting part of Professor Gomes is that he has been a great motivator and igniter for his innumerable students who are well established across the country and around the world in their individual spheres. Dear participants, I'm sure you all will be glued to your screens when such an eminent, eminent person is speaking. And with these words, I would like to request and invite Professor Gomes to start his keynote address. Sir, uh, sir, the platform is yours, sir. Thank you, Moshan. Thank you very much. I'll go to the slides. Yes, sir. Moshan? Yes, sir. Share screen. Share, screen. share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Can you see? No, sir, it is not uh, visible yet. Yeah. You can see now? No, sir. Uh, not yet, sir. Sir, uh, actually, go for share. Twice you have to click the uh, tab, share screen twice. Mm -hmm. Then there will be one option, entire screen. And in entire screen option, you have to click that screen. Then there will uh, the share option will be uh, automatically become blue. Mm -hmm. So you have to share that one. Then it will be OK. Share. 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 In the share Kurechi. Sir, ha, ha, admit, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Now you can, yes, 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 sir. You can go for slideshow. Go to the PPT first. It is, ha, yes, yes, yes. And now go for slideshow. Yes, sir. It's, it's clear now? Perfect. No. Perfect, yes. sir. Right. I'll start. Yes, sir. You can start, sir. Good morning and welcome to this international webinar organized by the Government Degree College, Dharmanagar. Distinguished guest, faculty members of Dharmanagar College, and my dear students. Tripura is my second home. I love to come to Tripura. I'm coming from 1989. And I would come more as the students of my students, they are asking me. In March 20, I was at Tripura covering seven lectures. 
just remember march 20 just covid started and i was at uh, that uh, mbb college and there we received a notice from government that stop seminar symposium and gathering the principal told me professor Gons, what we can do i told him you just remove all the banners and uh, you call for a class lecture so it was arranged in the form of a class lecture and it was on covid also and i finished the lecture that day i cancel my air flight tickets and I cancel all my lectures over there, including Dharmanagar. And uh, only I went to Matabari and I came back to Kolkata. So my desire to go to Dharmanagar was not fulfilled. And I hope today this virtual platform, which my student Mosam asked me to give me a lecture, has fulfilled that feelings. So thank you very much. Mosem, thank you, the faculty members, the organizing committee to speak here in this morning. I will speak on vaccine basic, COVID-19 vaccine and nanotechnology. The focal theme of the webinar has already been explained by our early speakers, including Vice Chancellor Sir Shudan and the principal also. What I am will focus my lecture will be on biomaterials because vaccine is a biomaterial. And biomaterial science encompasses elements of medicine, biology, chemistry, tissue engineering, and material science where I'll also speak on nanotechnology a bit. So these are the outlines which I'll follow. Vaccine basic, COVID-19 vaccine, nanotechnology and COVID-19 vaccine. I'll put a few questions and finally summarize. WHO declared COVID-19 a viral disease and a pandemic originated from Wuhan city of China in December 2019, affecting 222 countries, infected huge number. You see, the number is changing every day, killing more than 4 lakhs throughout the world and leading to a social and economic disruption social and economic disruption. In India, we are the second in the world in COVID data. America is number one. We are number two. Infected, see this amount, 3189483. And the total death, more than 4 lakhs. Till today, this number changing every day. We don't know where it will stop. The COVID-19 vaccine is the only answer to fight against the virus and bring down end of this pandemic. Vaccine chara kono upay nahi. Vaccine nite habe, vaccine ke to boost habe. So that's why I have chosen this area to tell the students the basics of what is vaccine. And this vaccine development is a very complex and time consuming process. Vision kotin even complex, time consuming, vision expensive process. Like it took 15 years to develop Ebola vaccine. Punoro bachor lege chile Ebola vaccine bar korte. Within one or two days or one year is very difficult. So the present lecture will discuss on vaccine basics, 
covid 19 vaccine and nanotechnology covid 19 vaccines my objective of this lecture is to aware our young students and teachers oneke hoyto kichu ta janen oneke hoyto janen na especially for the young students of college and school i have made this lecture in a very simple form so you have to learn how to survive against covid 19 increasing our body immunity with vaccine and this uh, already uk president boladiche we have to live with covid how long we don't know So let's see the basic terms. What is a vaccine? Vaccines are the life-saving, jivondai immunobiologicals prepared from life-threatening germs. They may be bacteria, they may be virus, they may be toxin. Vaccine prevents disease. Vaccine contain the same germ that cause disease. Injection vaccine, COVID-19 antibody For example, measles vaccine contains measles virus, COVID vaccine contains COVID virus, and they have either killed or weakened to the point they don't make you sick. And virus a vaccine stimulates your immune system to produce antibodies. Stimulate immune system to produce antibodies. Exactly like it would if you are exposed to the disease. And vaccination is the act of getting a vaccine usually as a shot or injection. Immunization is the process of becoming immune to protected against a disease. Immunization. Vaccination, what is getting a vaccine and immunization becoming the process of becoming immune to a disease. Let's see the history. 1525, smallpox epidemic in India. Epidemic hoche jakon localized hoy. Pandemic hoche jakon all places ho, jure hoche. Shara prithi bhi jure. Now 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Dekho upraye pasho bachore. E maji aro es che. Yindu pasho bachore duto shangha dik jinish. And 1798 the world's first vaccine against smallpox was developed by Edward Jenner. All of you have heard the name of Edward Jenner, who is popularly known as the father of vaccinology and founder of vaccinology, Edward Jenner. 1885, rabies vaccine to Louis Pasteur. 1894, rabies vaccine uh Kukure Kamra Leji vaccine. 1894. Dr. Albert Kalmet developed snake venom serum. This is my area of work and research. Though I won't talk today, another day I'll come and talk. 1930, vaccine era. Horek vaccine cholela, diphtheria, tetanus, anthrax, cholera, plague, typhoid, tuberculosis. Vaccine era. 20th century, vaccines for polio, measles, mumps, rubella. And 2021st century, innovative technology in vaccine research, innovative technology, recombinant DNA technology, new delivery system, use of nanotechnology, vaccine against non-communicable diseases such as allergy, addiction, either against or vaccine. Vaccine types. There are four types. Life attenuated. Example, BCG, oral polio, measles, yellow fever, rotavirus. They are life attenuated. Second one is inactivated or killed vaccine, killed antigen. 
The third one is subunit vaccine. Only a portion, purified antigen, takes for the preparation of the vaccine like hepatitis B. Four is the toxoid. Toxoid or inactivated toxin portion. Just as we take tetanus toxoid, that is a fourth type, tetanus diphtheria toxoid. So how this antigen virulence power is inactivated or weakened or killed? How? Normally by physical agent like heating, UV light and by chemicals, acid alkali, inactivating agent like formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, beta propanolactone detergent. So all these things, they are used for, for inactivating a, an antigen before vaccine preparations. What you are taking, what is there? If anybody asks you, you can tell there are number one, the antigen, like in COVID vaccine, there is COVID antigen is there, the germ is there, small amount of killed or weakened a broken part of the virus. It may happen nowadays recombinant DNA technology using, they are also using the antigen recombinant DNA technology uses per particular portion of the genomic area. The second is the adjuvant. There is some adjuvant. What is adjuvant? They prolong the immune system. Adjuvant are the increase the stimulation of the immune system by enhancing the antigen presentation and providing co-stimulation signals, what we call immunomodulation. So there should be an adjuvant, there should be stabilizers, number three, like sorbitol, citrate, BSA, glycine, stabilizers, that stabilizes the constituents. There should be some preservative like thiamersal, phenol, antibiotic, preservative issue. And there will be buffer medium, either water or saline or buffer. So these are the constituents or ingredients of a vaccine. Common, very common adjuvant is alum. We normally use in snake venom antiserum development that increases the stimulation of immune system by enhancing the antigen presentation and co-stimulation signal. So now you know what is adjuvant. And there are adjuvant also in your vaccine what you have taken. And what is cold chain? It is a common kotha aajkal shunbe. You will observe that the people who vaccinate you, they carry a bag which is cold. Because the vaccine has to be kept at low temperature, otherwise that will be wasted. A cold chain is a temperature control supply chain. It is used to preserve and extend and ensure the shelf life of products. They cannot keep it outside. They have to keep in a reduced temperature. So many things that are nowadays kept in cold chain. One is vaccine, definitely. Another agricultural product, seafood, then ice cream, frozen food. So all these things that are kept, pharmaceutical products, drugs, these are kept in cold chain system, just as the vaccine. Vaccine preparation steps. That passes through so many steps. Amra laboratory the vaccine manichi shaper against a antigen against a into up to a certain stage. That I'll explain you. The first is small scale preparation kora hai. Alpo kore ek tu toiri kore dakha hai. The second is the purification and testing. You have to purify that product and you have to test it. For this testing, number three is a preclinical trial. Testing a proton dapoche small animals. Amra labe in the lab we test in mice, rat, rabbit, guinea pig. 
these are the small animals and uh, in large animal monkey sheep so these also animals are tried before the vaccine goes to clinical trial number 4 clinical trial means in humans and that even takes place in three phases phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 you see very difficult each phase takes so many years Number five is a regulatory approval. After the clinical trial, the government should approve it. Then comes large scale production. Industrial large scale. Din Rath production Choleche, Serum Institute of India, Punete, day and night large scale production Hoche. That even they cannot provide enough to government of India. So large scale production, then comes sampling and labeling. We protect a bottle ke sampling kora, sterile way te, label kora, then comes fill test. Either act a batch take a act a sample ki dosta sample ne the other efficacy and safety test kora. Are they safe? Are they safe? The other kono reaction of chikina. Shegilok into testing na kore baje raste pare na. Performance monitoring. Now, vaccine is not going to be performance. It is not going to monitor, record, report. Then comes patent and licensing at the government level. What is patent patenting and licensing? Then comes proper distribution and marketing. TikTok distribute, fly to the shop, TV, fly to the shop, vaccine is not going এবং distribution হচ্ছে আমাদের এখানে কলকাতাতে বাগবাজারে আমাদের গোডাউন আছে সেখানে রাখছে দেন কমস দা মার্কেটিং বিভিন্ন চ্যানেল দিয়ে বিভিন্ন জায়গায় যাচ্ছে যেখানে ভ্যাকসিনেশন সেন্টার which is approved by the government government এগুলো ঠিক করে দেয় তার মানে বুঝতে পারছো যে সো মেনি স্টেপস ইটস নট আ নট আ ম্যাটার অফ ওয়ান মান্থ অর ওয়ান ইয়ার ইট টেকস আ হিউজ টাইম you may think that then how the vaccine is coming. This is on a on a very, very pandemic situation. Special special permissions are granted by WHO, ICMR. So quick vaccine, they are coming nowadays. So the question comes, what is the time requ required? What is the manpower required? And how much funds are involved in this process? You can't imagine at least 10 to 15 years lage at the proper way the vaccine to record. Manpower, hajar hajar scientists, clinicians, non-clinical, technical person, pharmacist, everybody is involved. And funds, hundreds of billion USD dollars that are involved in this process. It's a huge affair, huge affair. To me, Jacho Hashpatalegi, Hapta Kule Dile, injection delay to Michole. You just Kokono Bevecho, the Jeta to me Nile, Shira Kikure to me Pele, Kota the Keki, Pondo to the Dinish Tail. These are the lengthy procedures that follows. How it works? So you have taken the vaccine in your hand and it stimulates the immune system and developing long-lasting immunity against antigen. For the time being, we are taking two shot. My opinion and my thinking, it will come, a time will come when the government will ask us to take one booster dose annually, maybe annually. This is my view. injection boosting now. It may come, I don't know. So vaccination program first launched by WHO, Bisho Shasta Shangsta, WHO. They launched this WHO EPI expanded program of immunization to fight against six childhood diseases. All of you have taken this. Diphtheria, polio, tetanus, tuberculosis, measles and pertussis. Throughout the world, all the children, they are vaccinated with the initiative of 
বিশ্ব স্বাস্থ্য সংস্থা ডাব্লিউএইচও এন্ড গ্যাভি ভ্যাকসিনেশন প্রটেক্টস 80% অফ ওয়ার্ল্ড চিলড্রেন ফ্রম সিক্স মেজর ডিজিজেস এন্ড ইচ ইয়ার ভ্যাকসিনেশন প্রটেক্টস 2.5 মিলিয়ন চিলড্রেন ডেথ গ্লোবালি ক্যান ইউ ইমেজিন 2.5 মিলিয়ন চিলড্রেন ডেথ আর প্রটেক্টেড এভরি ইয়ার থ্রুআউট দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড গ্যাভি অলসো developed in 1999 this organization also helping who to extend their epi program to help the poor countries to introduce new vaccines in the national networking vaccine safety this is a very important issue testing and evaluation of the vaccine before its license takes several years america fda food and drug administration and center for drug control they provide these licenses in india truly we don't have any agency like this except icmr the fda and center for disease control prevention they are if they are satisfied with the data they will allow clinical trials that takes several years clinical trial in adult in clinical trial in children clinical trial in infants initially 100 volunteers followed by 1000 volunteers and their data are kept for analysis and give it to the government for their approval so the human trial will answer the following questions that like a human trial ki tan uttor debe on the one is the vaccine is safe two what is the effective dose till today we don't know the effective dose till today we don't know whether vaccine is 100% safe ki ekon ei kotha ta boleni kintu এবং কতখানি কাজ করবে ও বলছে এইটটি পার্সেন্ট কেউ বলছে নাইনটি ফোর কেউ বলছে নাইনটি কেউ বলছে সেভেন্টি ইস দেয়ার এনি সাইড ইফেক্টস টেল টুডে উই ডোন্ট হ্যাভ এনি দ্যাট লেভেল উই ডোন্ট হ্যাভ এনি ডেটা সো দ্যার ইজ নো প্লেস অফ হারিড ডিসিশন ইন এ সেফ ভ্যাকসিন ডেভেলপমেন্ট ওই তাড়াহুড়ো করে ভ্যাকসিন করা যাবে না যেটা ইনিশিয়ালি শুরু হয়েছিল দ্যার ইজ নো প্লেস অফ হারিড ডিসিশন in a safe vaccine development so this is the who epi schedule all of you are aware see at birth we take bcg then we take oral polio dose 1 six weeks 10 weeks dose 2 14 weeks dose 3 then we take dpt diphtheria pertussis and tetanus dose 1 six weeks 10 weeks dose 2 and 14 weeks dose 3 measles মেজলস এখন নিচ্ছে সকলে বাচ্চাদের দেওয়া হয় কোভিড নাইনটিন ভ্যাকসিন ইস এ বায়োলজিক্যাল প্রোডাক্ট ইটস এ বায়োলজিক্যাল প্রোডাক্ট অ্যান্ড বায়োটেকনোলজিক্যাল প্রোডাক্ট ইন্টারনেট টু প্রোভাইড অ্যাকোয়ার ইমিউনিটি টুডে নিয়ারলি ওয়ান সেভেন্টি ভ্যাকসিন ক্যান্ডিডেটস আর ইন ক্লিনিক্যাল ট্রায়াল তোমরা নিজেরা কটা দেখেছো ওই কোভ্যাক্সিন কোভিশিল্ড দেখেছো কিন্তু সারা পৃথিবীতে ওয়ান সেভেন্টি ভ্যাকসিন ক্লিনিক্যাল ট্রায়ালে রয়েছে অ্যান্ড অল দিস ফোর ভ্যাকসিন আর আইদার দে আর হোল ভাইরাস অর প্রোটিন সাবিউনিট অর ভাইরাল ভ্যাক্টর অর নিউলি নিউক্লিক অ্যাসিড আর এন এ ডিএনএ উইচ ইচ অফ উইচ প্রোটেক্টস পিপল বাই দেয়ার ওন ওয়ে প্রডিউসিং ইমিউনিটি ইন এ স্লাইটলি ডিফারেন্ট ফ্যাশন এই ছবিতেই আমি তোমাদের দেখাচ্ছি যে ওই ল্যাবরেটরিতে আগে তৈরি করা হয় তারপরে অ্যানিমালে তারপরে ক্লিনিক্যাল ট্রায়াল ফেজ ওয়ান ফেজ টু ফেজ থ্রি দেন দ্য এফ ডি অ্যাপ্রুভাল অ্যান্ড ফাইনালি লার্জ স্কেল ম্যানুফ্যাকচারিং লেটস ইন দ্য ভ্যাকসিন স্ট্র্যাটেজি ফর কোভিড নাইনটিন ভ্যাকসিন ওয়ান ইজ দ্য ইনঅ্যাক্টিভেটেড ভাইরাস ভ্যাকসিন হোল ভাইরাসটাকে ফিজিক্যালি আর কেমিক্যালি ইনঅ্যাক্টিভেটেড করা হয় পড়ে সেইটাকে দিয়ে অ্যাক্স অ্যাজ এন ইমিনোজেন ভাইরাস লাইক পার্টিকল অর ন্যানো পার্টিকল ভ্যাকসিন ইন দিস স্ট্র্যাটেজি স্ট্রাকচারাল ভাইরাস প্রোটিন আর কো এক্সপ্রেস টু ফর্ম নন ইনফেকশন পার্টিকলস মানে ভাইরাসের কিছুটা অংশ নিয়ে তার সঙ্গে ন্যানো ন্যানো পার্টিকল ক্রস করে সেইটা দিয়ে তারা ভ্যাকসিন ডেভেলপ করছে প্রোটিন সাব ইউনিট ভ্যাকসিন অ্যান্ড ভাইরাস ভ্যাক্টর ভ্যাকসিন জিনস এন্ড কোডেড প্যাথোজেন অ্যান্টিজেন আর cloned into non replicating and replicating virus vector such as adenovirus 
ইমিনোজেনিসিটি <laughs> So these are the structural development process. You can see this is the viral vector, attenuated virus, inactivated virus. Uh, DNA vaccine, subunit vaccine. We have to know about the antigen. To me, jar against a vaccine to banachu, takikirakum dikte dako. Corona vaccine virus is enveloped, positive sense, single stranded RNA virus. The virus diameter is 60 to 114 nanometer, round and oval, stable in plastic, stainless steel, inactivated by UV and heating, and disinfectant like alcohol, isopropanol. That's the reason. So this is the culprit. American president said Kung Fu virus. Spike protein, envelope protein, nuclear protein, and the membrane protein. But now you can have the full genomic sequence. Akonora vaccine to ericoche genomic sequence portion near Korche, full genomic sequence among the Kachiachi. A COVID 19 proteins, they are, they are the major structural proteins like the spike protein, membrane protein, envelope protein. They are targeted for the production of the of the of the vaccine s protein responsible for the recognition of the host cellular receptor n protein embedded in the envelope and shape the viron envelope e protein small polypeptide crucial for infectivity n protein makes the helical to nucleocaspid and binds to the rna genomes so these are the proteins against which the the vaccine are targeted ইন্ডিয়াস ফার্স্ট Vaccine, Covaxin has been developed by Bharat Biotech, ICMR, New Delhi and National Institute of Virology, Pune. Covaxin contains an ineffective form of the antigen of the COVID-19 that cannot replicate but stimulate the immune system to make antibodies against the virus. According to the NIH National Institute of Health, Maryland Bethesda, The results published in the phase two vaccine trial shows that it is safe and well tolerated. A NIH governor Pithor Stan, the Makka, Medina and what not, NIH, Maryland, Bethesda. We had a dream at our childhood that I should work at NIH as a postdoc fellow. Somehow my dream doesn't fulfill but my students they are right now in nih and working on cancer so i am happy in that sense today who are listening my lecture the young students of this college another college mathay rakho tomader o nih e jete hobe oi kane gi goboshona korte hobe ota goboshonar pitrostan that the makka madina of research So phase three trial of Covaxin showed that vaccine is safe and looking for approval. Covaxin already approved many countries. 
Covishield also approved, which is developed by Serum Institute of India. A Serum Institute of India, Pune, they, Amar, I had the opportunity to visit their, visit their uh, factory because my friend was there. They are the manufacturer of anti-snake venom vaccines also. So recently they approved their vaccine also approved in many parts of the world. So we have right now in India too, Covaxin and Covishield. Both are equally good. So don't wait. Go and take the vaccines in your turn. The USA vaccine, WHO Strategic Advisory Group on Immunization issued interim recommendation for the use of Moderna mRNA vaccine. It is mRNA vaccine, a dumbbishy, a costly, and a preservation work too difficult. Minus temperature, you have to preserve this. But it is not recommended for young, above 18 years or older. The Moderna mRNA 123 vaccine stored at minus 20 and two dose, dite hai, 20 days apart. And the interval of the dose may be extended up to 42 days. And it is, uh, they told us quality is good and safe. The whole America is taking Moderna vaccine. The Moderna vaccine has been shown to have an efficacy of approximately 94%, see, in protecting COVID-19, starting 14 days after the first injection. When the first injection is a vaccine, bhalo protection dite shuru kore. Very good. But you won't get Moderna. Moderna has not been approved in India. The Russian vaccine Sputnik V, which was approved by Russian Health Ministry, initially approved by India, but there are a lot of questions regarding the safety and efficacy. So right now, stopped Sputnik, Sputnik V in India. There are Chinese vaccines, we know we do not know much about the Chinese vaccine. But AstraZeneca, they are signing with China, Britain, South Korea, Brazil, targeting 2 billion doses of the vaccine worldwide. UK, the biggest vaccine, Covaxin 19 project, cleared clinical trial approved in many countries. Israel government, they have turned their vaccines, but in still in clinical trials. In Japan, they are working on a vaccine using silkworm moth, silkworm protein to create oral vaccine. If oral vaccine comes, it will be very good. Oral vaccine like oral polio, they are trying. They will start their clinical trial recently. I'll go to a new area of material science, nanotechnology, and that application in vaccine development, what we know about it. What is nanotechnology? The creation of functional material devices and system through control of matter at the nanometer scale and exploitation of the novel properties and phenomena developed at that scale actual nanometer scale. Nanomaterial defined as material with an average grain size less than 100 nanometer and one nanometer is one billion nanometer equals to one meter. The average width of human hair in the order of 100,000 nanometer among their human hair, a single particle of smoke in the order of 1,000 nanometer. So you can this is the, you can see this is the bacteria, this is the, this is the tube ball and this scale is minus nanomaterial. The lower the nano size, the greater the reactivity sometimes. So these are the nanomaterial nanoparticle. They can be classified in carbon black, carbon nanotube, graphene, fullerene, nanofiber. They may be metal. Alloy, gold, copper, silver. I had the opportunity to work on gold nanoparticle and silver nanoparticle. Amra, we shaper bishteke protein, toxin, isolate kore. 
we conjugated gold nanoparticle with them to increase their anti-cancer efficacy. Apart from these, there are ceramics and polymers like alumina, silica, titanium. So these are the nanoparticles, the nanotubes and the nanofiber polymers. So the application of nanotechnology in daily life, tremendous application. Can't even imagine. Information technology, IT-based system, computation, energy process, See, more efficient, more cost-effective technology, solar cell, fuel cell, battery, biofuel, then a huge application in medicine, cancer treatment, bone treatment, drug delivery, disinfectant. Wash your hand, wash your hand. Now you can get nano disinfectants, drug development, biomedical tools, diagnostic test, imaging, vaccine development. So all these medical applications of nanotechnology are coming very fast, already in the market. There are food and beverage system advanced, packaging of material, sensor, lab chip for food quality testing, application and textiles, stain proof, waterproof, wrinkle free clothing, household and cosmetics. You can see in many there are, the, you, can, you can have the cream, and many other things for ladies as well as generals. There are nano base materials, shampoo, and many more things. Paints, cosmetics that are coming in the market where nanoparticle application are widely. And what is biomedical application nanotechnology? Nano medicine is the medical application of nanotechnology. Medical application of nanotechnology starting from nano electronics, biosensors, and future application of molecular nanotechnology. Nano medicine seeks delivery of valuable research tools and clinically helpful devices, such as advanced drug delivery, new therapies against incurable diseases, incurable diseases, cancer, viral disease, etc like COVID-19 against everybody trying to develop nano vaccine. In vivo imaging technology, CT and PET scan, where nanotechnology are used, neuroelectric interface and nano electronic base sensor. So these are the advanced application of nanotechnology. And in the near future, especially the nano medicine will flourish like anything. The role of nanotechnology and COVID-19 control, you can see in diagrammatically I have shown you the nano materials which are used in diagnostic kits for detection of COVID-19. Not in India, in the other parts of the world, they are using as a diagnostic kit. In the treatment of COVID-19, they are using nanomaterials. In the disinfectant hand wash, one can use the nano-based materials. They are more efficient, cheaper. And the vaccine production not yet arrived in India. They are in the process. I'll speak a bit about this vaccine, nano-based vaccine. And protective equipments. You can see the clothing, the hand gloves, the the shield, the, the hat, these are made up of nanoparticles. Nano-based vaccine against COVID-19. The mRNA vaccine, which has tried by the Moderna. This is a nano-based vaccine. Right now, phase three clinical trial. They are using the mRNA vaccine S protein encapsulated in lipid nanoparticles. They get your lipid nanoparticles encapsulated kure tarakintu nano vaccine to ilikochi. And they, are, they claim this is more effective. Maybe nearly 100% bolche ora eta kachkur be. So we have to wait for these nano based vaccines. Cardi 
what is the Vesia which is developed by China? They are also in phase three trial. NKV COVID 2736 Novavax USA, they also phase three trial Cholche USA, another vaccine cell component assemble nanoprotein phase one. Pfizer is trying one. This is in phase three. So any one of the mRNA or Pfizer vaccine nanobase will come very shortly. This is from Germany. Students, the nanobase vaccine kintu in the long run, they will come. But in India, I don't think so. Anybody working on nano-based vaccines against COVID. We should start work in this area. You come forward to do this work. My days are over. You come forward and do this work. We are with you. We will help you. So role of biomaterials and COVID-19 vaccine. Biomaterials such as alginate, chitosan, dextrin, hydrogel, proteins, they permit a design strategy that can combine with an antigen. Or your nano uh, COVID-19 antigen is shown the biomaterial lagiye, they provide better protection. So combination of biomaterials with the antigen, adjuvant and growth factor into a single particle that can provide more protection, enhanced immune activation, control, targeted delivery. Vaccine ta thik jaga hai nii jaave. Daro, daro lung ta damage korche, antigen ta. To vaccine ta kintu, jekane oi delivery ta korbe, uh, antigen, uh, antigen delivery ta korbe biomaterials kulo. Directly tara lungs hai nii ge, lung ta ke damage ta ke bacha be. So this sort of, this sort of uh, work protocol now coming up very fast. Targeted biomaterial targeted vaccine and antigen. So they will also less toxic. In the long run, this type of nano biomaterial and COVID vaccine will come in the market. Antigen is shang chitosan, you the linking korahai, among they they turn from soluble to insoluble and they release the antigen very fast to the endosinal tissue and cells. There they are encapsulated and trigger the, the immunological circuits very fast. So that's why the chitosan, the biomaterial, they target the antigen and deliver to the cell for greater production of immunity. So this is how the biomaterial interact with the antigen. Either they adsorb to the surface of the antigen or they are encapsulated or they are conjugated or their infiltration is there or they are mixed with the antigen. So there are many ways. These are the linker. You can see the linker. This is how the biomaterial interaction with the antigen. I'll ask the postgraduate students to think about these things, whether they can think about the biomaterials and antigen interaction and start doing some basic work on the vaccine. Parve, tumra parve kintu, nothing to worry. So let me put a few questions to you. If the vaccine limitations are really a problem regarding their biosafety, regarding their efficacy, regarding their cost and regarding their shelf life. So we have to work on these, especially on the nanoparticle base. They will be more safe, more efficacious, less costly, and their shelf life will be increased. Therefore, nanotechnology-based vaccine should be tried. Commercialization and distribution of vaccine is a major concern Marud Borshanai, whole world is a major concern. Another thing, virus, they mutate and they're producing new strains. Whether the old vaccine won't work, 
whether you need, we need a new vaccine, we don't know yet. But the virus is mutating, changes its character. And we also have to be aware about this. We have to go for new vaccines also. And research and development is the answer. Amar Boli Bharat Borshe, research and development takindu Shuru Karauchi, Shei Bhabe. Will COVID 19 persist in our life or in our society? But how long? The UK President Bodachina, we have to live with COVID. But how many years? We don't know. So very careful. COVID will stay. Uno Uno pandemic into Pachabachore Agajaini. Shutarang Asha Koraja, COVID 19 of Kintu. So we have to be very serious, we have to be careful, you have to be cautious. And be cautious about the social media. It is a disgusting issue. Misinformation. Be careful. Misinformation. Research on COVID-19. These are the for the young mind, young students. Those who are thinking, they will take research as their career. As I have taken for the last 40 years, I have doing research. And I am happy for that. Effects, number one, effects on virus on nature. So far, we are concerned about human beings. But what about the nature? What about the plant life? What about the animal life? We don't know yet. Recently, I saw a news that five tigers were affected by COVID-19. Then what will be the vaccine for them? So these are the questions will be coming. We have to save our planet also. The plant kingdom, the animal kingdom. Let us save us first, then the plant and the animals. Number two, transmission of virus via sewerage. All the dirty water going throughout, they also carrying the virus. We have to think about how to treat the strategies. We have to think about the zoonotics. The next pandemic will come from the animals. This is already declared by a renowned virologist from Israel. Number three, how to break the chain of transmission. We have to develop a new, some new techniques. Now we are breaking the chain of transmission by lockdown, social distancing, washing and many other things. But we have to go for new technique for breaking of the chain of transmission of the virus. We have to go for new, new technology of lockdown and social distancing because these two are very expensive. They are killing our economy. So we have to develop new process apart from lockdown and social distancing, how we can save ourselves from COVID-19. So we have to be careful from the next pandemic. What is focused that from the animals will have the next pandemic. Very careful. So my time is nearly over. <clears throat> I'll summarize. Vaccine development is a key strategy for preventing widespread viral infection, reducing morbidity and mortality. Vaccine chara kono pot nei. Vaccine development key strategy. We absolutely need cost effective COVID 19 vaccine available globally. Cost effective. Mane within our reach Public trust in vaccine safety is the key of success in vaccine production. Public trust. When a vaccine is the public trust, trust is the A time, though the vaccine is a time consuming protocol, vaccine production is a time consuming protocol, 10 to 20 years. A professor Amos Panett, you are a student, you are a type. In an on YouTube lecture, as a Balo Balo virologist, COVID 19 no put a cool Balo lecture at you. You can listen to him, Amos Panet, virologist, Hebrew University, Jerusalem. New research area on COVID 19 virus and vaccine research 
should be initiated in India, which I'm stressing repeatedly that we should start research on COVID-19 virus and vaccine research. Let's the scientist, the industry, the academic, government, non-government sector, politicians, accept the vaccine cheaters. Vaccine cheater bedi ye kaise bajare hone? Tara shab vaccine churi kore bichche, vaccine na me shab aje bajare jinis diye bichche. We have to be careful about these vaccine cheaters. They should come forward to solve the COVID issue, to save the world from this pandemic, to hand joining hand to hand. So these are the references. Student, tomra ek tu ei vaccine prathom reference ta porbe. Second reference to Purbe, WHO protocol, e-learning course, very beautiful, vaccine safety basics. You should learn these things. This textbook is very good. Park and Park Preventive and Social Medicine. These are for the undergraduate and postgraduate students, not for the teachers. So finally, I like to thank the organizing committee, the principal of Dharmanagarka. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me this opportunity in this morning to talk to your students. I thank the HOD of the Department of Physiology and special thank to all the faculty members, especially Dr. Mohsen Bhattacharya, who is one of my past PhD student. So take vaccine two shots and follow me. Social distance, mask and hand wash. Again, social distance, mask and hand wash. Don't forget. এখন অবধি কোভিডে যত মানুষ মারা গেছে তাদের প্রতি আমাদের শ্রদ্ধা ভারতবর্ষে সারা পৃথিবীতে যত মরেছে ও প্রার্থনা আই ডোন্ট নো ওয়্যার ইট উইল এন্ড ফাইনালি মাই প্রেয়ার্স এন্ড ব্লেসিংস ফর ইউ थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर दिस एनलाइटिंग टॉक and uh, i can see from the chat box that uh, uh, there are no questions rather uh, the chat box has been showered with compliments and they have our students have already been motivated by your talk and they are uh, eager to take up research as a career from I, i think from tomorrow onwards some of them have written like that so sir once again i thank you from on behalf of uh, the organizing committee and from the core of my heart for Uh, sparing your valuable time and motivating us in engaging ourselves into uh, the the vaccine research uh, thank you thank you very much needed. thank you very much sir okay now uh, with this uh, we will uh, come to our next uh, speaker uh, dr sudipto shaha and uh, well dr sudipto shaha Uh, is an assistant professor in physiology at the Amity Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences at Amity Amity University Noida he did his masters from the University of Calcutta and his phd from the Indian Institute of Chemical Biology which is a csir institute at Jadavpur Kolkata thereafter he continued his postdoctoral research at csir at the csir institute of Indian Institute of Chemical Biology and then he went to taiwan to pursue his postdoctoral research and he did an exhaustive research work and a, and an in-depth research work in the field of reproductive physiology and uh, he has published uh, several research articles in national and international peer reviewed journals and authored several book chapters he is also the scientific author curator and reporter of pharmaceuticalintelligence.com which is an international website Uh, which uh, which uh, writes about scientific articles related to medical science and uh, dear students if you want to get engaged into medical writing right so you can you can contact uh, i would like your permission dr subhito sir uh, yeah, yeah. to uh, help our students you can get associated with him you can put him a mail and i'm sure he will be happy to help you all and uh, he's presently one more thing he's presently uh, he has received the funding from the department of science and technology a uh, science engineering research board or dstacrd for carrying out a project on reproductive physiology and has established the state of the art reproductive physiology research laboratory at amity university at noida 
So with these words, I would like to invite and request Dr. Sudipto Shaha to kindly give his deliberation invited lecture uh, in this virtual platform. Sir, the platform is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mawson. And thank all the dignitaries for giving me this opportunity to sh uh, share my views with you. Uh, so let me first share my screen. Is it visible to you? Uh, Dr. Motion, can you please confirm? Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. We can start your lecture. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so as Dr. Motion has already introduced me, uh, that I am Dr. Shadipta Shaha from uh, Amity University, Noida. So, yeah, I did my PhD from IICD Kolkata and from Changang University, Taiwan. Uh, so, basically, uh, this is my details as a whole. So, schooling from St. Lawrence, Kolkata, BSc from City College, MSc from Presidency, Calcutta University, PhD from C IICB, and then postdoc in uh, IICB as well as in Changan in Taiwan. And after that, I was a postdoc. Uh, I was a SRA, CSIR Senior Research Associate at uh, IICB. And after that, uh, I am presently the assistant professor at MIT University of Noida. Now, uh, initially, I thought of presenting some of my research data. Uh, but then Dr. Mosom told me that uh, most of the audience would be bachelor degree students. Some of some are master degree students and from all part of India, from Dharmanagar and also from other parts. And Dr. Mosam also insisted that I should speak a little bit in Bengali. Uh, but OK, let's see, because I think people are there from all parts of India. But I will try to put in some Bengali in between. OK, anyway, so basically in my lecture, because uh, you are all BSc students and MSc students, BSc students on the verge of going into MSc, MSc students on the verge of going into PhD. So I would rather speak about my starting days, you know, that I, because I would like to like, rather in, uh, inspire you people, try to inspire you people so that in future uh, you can uh, take up research as a career. Because, you know, we are nowadays mostly tend, okay, tend to take like, technical courses. You finish your bachelor's, you want job. You finish your master's, you want job. So if there is a campus placement, you go for that. Okay. So basically, but I would like to like inspire you, you, you people uh, with the experience of my initial days in, in research and then how I went about with it. Like how opportunities will come to you. It, it will not be a, always a, you know, uh, like, a, like a path of flowers where you just uh, walk through and get into your destination. It is sometimes, you know, whatever opportunities comes your way, if you take it up and if you module, I mean, if you properly channelize it, you can go into a particular direction so that, you know, you can achieve uh, uh, the kind of goals that you would like to achieve. Okay. So the, the name, the title of my talk that I have kept is uh, Novels for Mortality at the Research Perspective. So basically a novel um, the, on the research perspective of a novel sperm motility analyzer and a new sperm motility stimulating protein. So as Dr. Mosam has already introduced that I am into reproductive biology. So my research was basically on sperm motility. Uh, so we have devised an instrument during my PhD, which actually, you know, analyzes the movement of spermatozoa or the velocity of spermatozoa in the vertical direction. And a new sperm motility stimulating protein was also isolated by me. So how these opportunities came into my way? So as I was searching for my PhD in my PhD days, so I, as I went to IICB and got the opportunity, I was told I will have to make an instrument. And as because Dr. Mosam has already told me that you are, some of you are not only physiology students are here, there are physics students out here, there are chemistry students out here, as far as I know. So I have kept in such a way that you, the physics students also get some interest, the chemistry or the biochemistry students also get some interest, the physiology students also get interest in just uh, listening to my lecture. So basically, uh, I was a physiology student like you people uh, in, in from Calcutta University. 
uh, I just listened to our uh, professor, uh, Dr. Anthony Gomes, uh, sir's talk. He was our teacher. So basically, uh, then I uh, I was told that I will have to devise an instrument. Now, a physiologist without any experience in engineering, how will that person going to devise an instrument? But yeah, you should take the opportunity that you get and try to do the best out of it. Okay. So now let me just go through it. There will be several slides, but some of it that those I will skip because I don't want to discuss too much of data that will go above your head and that's not necessary, but at least try to understand that how do you approach things. So this is the my place where CSIR ICB and my supervisor, Dr. GC Majumdar and uh, and my co-supervisor, Dr. S. R. Dongdo, we did our, um, I did my PhD under them. Uh, my primary um, um, guide was Dr. G. C. Majumdar. So in that lab, several works was done, you know, like extracellular factors affecting sperm motility, sperm surface molecules affecting sperm motility. They can be proteins, they can be lipids. There were work on sperm cryopreservation. There were work on motility assay methods. Uh, some previous work was done in that lab. So several different works were there. And initially, I was given the work of this vertical velocity analyzer, which is marked in red over here to, to find out. Uh, so I was told that how can you devise something like that? And also I got interest in the motility stimulating protein MSP because I wanted to like, uh, I wanted to find something out. So in, side by side, I was doing some biochemical work and thereby I came across certain proteins which I purified, characterized and then found its function. But that's the later story. Initial story is the vertical velocity analyzer. So at some point of time, I will try to speak in Bengali. So prothome, I'm just a column. The key core vertical velocity analyzer, the sperm and movement and analyzer time the So then what we did. So this is basically our model system was goat sperm. Why goat sperm? Because goat sperm is very stable and uh, in centrifugation, it can uh, it can doesn't get damaged easily and uh, it is easily available as a food material in the market so you don't need ethical permissions for this so we talk took the goat sperm and we took the sperm from the corda epididymis you know epididymis all physiology students this is the caput corpus and the corda epididymis so this has the maximum matured sperm over here in the corda so we took those cells extracted them and worked with them so it was very easy no animal maintenance and etc just uh, get the tissue from the shop and do your research so that's how you ease up your research. You don't go into rat and mice and then what happens? You need ethical permission and you cannot uh, like uh, uh, kill too many animals. Ethical, ethics don't allow you and you cannot work. So it's better to go for a, this kind of a model. So this was the first thing that we devised. Now, analyzer. So how to go about with it? Uh, so presently there are whole lot of analyzers available in the market. So why go for another analyzer? There are general hemocytometers, macular chambers, microscopy analysis. There are also several types of analyzers which can uh, um, uh, determine the quantity and the movement of cells. So why another analyzer? What is so special about it? Why should we go for it? So then what happened? Uh, what we did basically uh, so here is another analyzer, computer-aided similar analyzer. So this also measures the velocity of spermatozoa. So how do we, uh, um, so why do we need another analyzer at all? So this is the question. Why do we need another instrument that can measure the velocity? So what we, uh, and so what we rationalize that in any in vitro fertilization lab, if you go, you will find those people are taking up are, are analyzing the sperm under microscope in a slide or in a hemocytometer but or in a macular chamber but they are taking up the swim up cells so there must be some reason why they are taking the swim up some sperm cells that is they allow the cell to, uh, under a under a beaker or a test tube and whatever cell can swim up the uh, buffer solution they will take up those cells for the ivf uh, treatment for the ivf uh, no incubation and all that so that means the sperm cells that can swim up has a better quality. So that's why we need to measure the velocity of those cells and thereby we can grade the sperm cells at per, as per their fertilizing ability. 
তাহলে এভাবে করলে আমরা সব থেকে ভালো স্পাম সেলটাকে তুলে আনতে পারবো এবং সব থেকে ভালো ধরো অনেক স্যাম্পল আছে দের আর সেভারাল স্যাম্পলস সো হাউ ডু ইউ নো ইট উই আর নট অনলি কনসার্ন অ্যাবাউট হিউম্যান বিং ইট ইজ অবাউট অ্যানিম্যাল অলসো অ্যানিম্যাল হাজবেন্ড্রি পোলট্রি সো সাপোজ ইউ নো ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু টেক সাম স্পাম ফ্রম অস্ট্রেলিয়া অফ দ্য অস্ট্রেলিয়ান বুল অ্যান ইউ টু ফার্টিলাইজ সাম কাউ ইন ইন্ডিয়া আর সামওয়ে সো ইউ হ্যাভ আ ব্যাচ অফ স্পাম সেলস কামিং হাউ ডু ইউ নো হুইচ ইজ দ্য বেস্ট কোয়ালিটি অ্যান্ড হাউ ডু ইউ নো যে যা সব থেকে অল্প অ্যামাউন্ট ইউজ করে লিটল বিট অ্যামাউন্ট অফ ইউজ ক্যান বি ইউজ ফর mass production for a greater production also in leather industry in all other industry it can be it can it can uh, uh, help so this this that was the rationale behind finding out an analyzer which can find out the vertical velocity of spermatozoa because this analyzer as you saw can measure only the horizontal velocity on a slide and this analyzer uh, can uh, is very costly 50 to 60 lakh rupees for one analyzer so we need something cost uh, less uh, by economical for a country like ours so otherwise only few people can buy few labs can buy it otherwise others will not be able to do that so why vertical velocity is so special so just to rationalize i would like to show you in the right side and the right side in the left you can see a spacecraft in the right you can see a general car but both of them carry four people so you can as well see uh, can say which one consumes more energy obviously the one that travels in the vertical direction carries the most amount of the energy so that's why moving against the gravity needs more energy and you can grade the sperm cells when you walk on a staircase you need more energy when you walk on the flat or like a horizontal surface you least need less energy so as as a rational i would say when people are working or walking on a on a on a flat floor on a street you cannot say who is a heart patient but when you tell them to go uh, up the stair then you can understand who is a fitter person who is not a fitter person so this is a rational behind that we want to analyze the vertical velocity of spermatozoa okay so this is the general uh, uh, way that i just wanted to say why how you develop why we want to develop the vertical velocity analyzer so we developed the instrumental system but that was not so easy so what we did we got the reference from a 1977 paper and also a paper of my supervisor in 1984 that spectrophotometrically concentration of cells can be analyzed and spectrophotometrically the rate of movement of cell in the upward direction can be estimated percentage can be estimated but not velocity okay so these are the two papers that we read from our previous studies then gradually you can see i started my work in 2002 2003 this was the first prototype being made then the second prototype was made with the help of elico hyderabad and with the help of indian association for the cultivation of science workshop so we devised and the final prototype was this one so you can see 2003 and this is 2011 when this final prototype was made so a lot of work went into it a lot of discussion a lot of uh, things like uh, just to give you the schema the, the concept of what was actually done i would like to show you so suppose this is a spectrophotometer which has a light sensor and a light source source and a sensor and this is your cuvette and you fill up the buffer solution to a certain amount, a certain level so and with the help of a, a fine hamilton syringe you lay the sperm cells mixed with a fecal fecal is a, a high molecular weight substance which hold the sperm cell under the solution but does not cause any problem uh, like to the sperm cells health or to or to its morphology to its function so after that what happened the sperm cell laid and this uh, the concept that we developed uh, during this time that if we just raise the uh, um, uh, somehow can raise the cuvette to different heights we can scan the different levels of this particular cuvette and thereby we got a optical density chart against time at different depths and which we which we can uh, obviously plot and as we can plot them we can uh, so what is actually happening inside the cuvette let me just show you very quickly so this is the cuvette and look this is the solu buffer solution level with the help of this hamilton syringe you are layering the cells down there and as you are layering the cells down there you are uh, the, there are four different heights the scanning is done and there is a the cells are coming up and they are getting registered at various levels 
and thereby they can just uh, you, so you can get the optical density and the optical density chart. So this chart, when you get the plot, so any point in this in this plot is actually it is referring to a particular bunch of cell. And initially, we can only take the initial data. When the cells are all mixed up in the solution, you cannot do anything. So at the initial stage, we take optical density, say, suppose we consider a particular optical density and we drop a perpendicular on the y axis, the intersecting points give you the particular time at which this particular bunch of cell was here, was here, was here. So you can say that from the H3, H3 is the lowermost height, H2 is the second height, H1 is the second topest height and H0 is the topmost height. So you can understand from here at what and how the cells are coming up at, at which time. So now I was told, okay, find out some uh, calculus and uh, formula, et cetera, uh, derivatives, et cetera, to find out, you know, tan theta and this, et cetera, to find out. I'm not a mathematician. So I go very simple. So the vertical displacement by time gives you the velocity. You make it an average, it gives you the average displacement velocity. Because I am not measuring a single cell. I am measuring a bunch of cells. Ah, so that's how we came to this concept of vertical velocity. So that's how we could develop it. So then we kind of uh, make a schematic of it. And uh, so this was how the calculation was done. I'm not going to do so much details. So uh, just uh, to show you. So three different softwares had to be developed. I am not a software person. So we got to get help of some people from outside who would develop the software for the up and down movement of the qubit. So this is I'm telling for the physics people who are sitting out here. So you need these actuators and things which can cause the up and down movement of the qubit. You need the data acquisition software. So uh, you need the software to be developed and you need the software for data processing and report generation. So as a scientist, the concept is with me that what I want, how the software will be developed, the coding thing, the coding specialist will do. I can only give my idea. So we sat for several, several, several hours and these softwares could be developed. I will refine it every moment and then gradually the software, you can see this is the user interface of the software where four different height graphs are coming and then gradually you get all these uh, user interfaces where you put, put in the reference qubit and then you put in the sample qubits and then gradually your data comes up and this is a, in the, the interface from where you give your commands and gradually you get your data chart and etc. and you get all these four graphs from there and you can get a tabulated value of not only vertical velocity but of the cell concentration these are the different uh, parameters you can see percent for one mortality for one mortality unit velocity base to high velocity in between heights average vertical velocity cell concentration change in cell concentration so so many different but average vertical velocity this is the most important as it can give you the best index for the health of the cell okay so this one we did then it is all about data to validate that our thing is good. So we had to validate hand in going hand in hand with other vertical velocity analyzers. So we kind of you know tallied the data with the horizontal analyzers that is CASA. We took the our instrument to Hyderabad to CCMB uh, and then uh, we had we could do it because CASA 60 lakhs not available everywhere, not available in Kolkata at that time. So we got to go to Hyderabad and then we kind of found out and rationalized with all these experiments that yes, vertical velocity is a better, um, uh, I mean, index. So here in this very simple experiment, you can see the, we can see the percentage mortality. So what you basically see over here, that when your forward mortality percentage is pretty high horizontally, your forward, your actual vertical velocity can be zero. So you can see in the C graph, the C, it is flat, but Horizontally, it is showing 20% mortality, 19.89. But vertically, it's zero. No optical density is recorded in the software. Okay. So that means horizontal mortality is misleading. You need a cell which actually has good vertical velocity. Okay. So then we rationalize all these things and uh, with all inhibitors, activators and show that, yeah, our uh, our thing is really activating and inhibiting things and showing it. So this was the final, uh, you can call it schematics, which we said, 
the one which will be a winner over here, the vertical, the best velocity will be a winner over here when it is when it is comes to the fertilization process. So this is uh, the general schematics you can say about the entire work. So human infertility, so it application areas, human infertility clinic, animal breeding centers, poultry, animal conservation laboratories, university and research organizations. So whole field is open. People can work on it with all the different to drugs, all the different things and whatever, why not? Okay, so anywhere, and this can be also be extended into bacteria and protozoa, which can actually move. Bacteria can have some, some bacteria of cilia, they can move. So you can take the vertical velocity and find out how they're uh, in that dimension, how is it actually working? So we got the patent for this. Uh, the patent uh, uh, has already been accepted uh, for this. And then we had publications in some international conference in Canada, in uh, cytometry party, one of the most renowned journal in cell measurement. Then we had press reports in Telegraph and in News Online. And I got certain awards for this, best poster awards, some biotech idea to innovation awards, some honorable mention award from government, etc. The STDBT. So several things happened with this. So that's how. With a little opportunity that you get, although you don't have the expertise in it, you can do things that you may like to do. Okay. So this is uh, at CCMB also, we got some PLB award and all that. So this is my guide, Dr. DC Majumdar. And also I would show uh, Mr. Devashish Pal, who is the computer expert, computer division expert and uh, head. So they all kind of helped me out. And then we also extended the project later into uh, I wrote the extension project, but I was as that time I was a research associate only. So I could not get a project directly from extramural project. So it was, I wrote it for uh, Dr. Dung Dung and uh, we got the work done. Um, some extra work was done on it. Okay. So now very quickly, I will go across the other part of my work, which I did, which is basically using the uh, goat blood serum for stimulating sperm motility. So what we actually did initially, we tried with goat serum and we found that it is increasing motility of spermatozoa and then it is decreasing motility of spermatozoa after you increase the percentage of the goat serum, volume volume by volume. Okay. So when I say volume by volume, chemistry students must be understanding it very well. Okay. So, uh, so we did it. And then we found what is the factor causing this increment of motility which is there in the serum. So we tried to find out. We find we initially what we did, we did dialysis and we found out, okay, it is not outside the bag, it is inside the dialysis bag. So it is, a, uh, so we found out that, okay, the, the whole serum and the non-dialyzable fraction is causing the motility increment. Then we found out, is it a protein? Is it a something else? So you treat it with trypsin, you will find if it is a protein, it will work. It will like uh, uh, reduce, I mean, the activity will go. So we found out then temperature to our astonishment we found it is too much heat stable at 100 degrees we are getting the protein active okay so this protein is remaining active at 100 degrees for two minutes even i tried more also okay so then we started purifying the system so different types of chromatographic techniques were used for this purification system, for this purification, which can, we can talk in some other lecture, some point else. So just several purification. Then we did some Cephacrylase 200. We did some native gel. Uh, and then finally we found out the protein. So this is the lower band uh, is the, the protein that is the active band that is causing the motility. And then we characterize the protein. We characterize it's a monomer uh, with the help of uh, this uh, uh, SDS uh, page, then we did uh, some, you know, uh, 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 other, uh, like uh, like the molecular weight of the protein was determined with the help of uh, Cephacrylase 200 gel, with the help of SDS page, and with the help of HPLC, we found out the purity and the molecular weight. We also sequenced the N-terminal of the protein, and uh, then, you know, what happened? The N-terminal was found that N-terminal is kind of a part I mean, the, the, the end terminal of our protein is like this, as it's written in the red color below. So when we, we see it is a part inside BSA, it is a part. 
you know maybe it's a derivative from bsa because it's a serum protein who knows but uh, we could not go it any further because we did not had the fund to go forward that's a big deal you know for every amino acid you need 500 to 1000 rupees for its uh, sequence i mean sequencing amino acid sequencing so then we kind of uh, did all kind of you know this analysis to find out how the protein works how effic uh, what is the efficacy level so from all the known uh, like uh, known uh, mortality controllers this has the highest uh, mortality uh, i mean um, uh, it, it could enhance the mortality to a very 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 high extent vision bhalo kaj kore and in room temperature also it maintains the sperm mortality okay generally you need 37 degrees but in room temperature also it can maintain the mortality of the mitochondria so we saw all kind of at 7.7 ph or 7.5 ph it works the best and then we saw the some uh, the magnesium and calcium how the combination goes how it works and we find out that other known promoters how they are and how our protein is and we found that it is way what better than normal promoters of sperm motility okay so you can see it is our normal promoters are increasing to 30% 40% and ours is taking the motility to 70% uh, our protein msp is taking it to Okay, so we found uh, this out. The combination we tried, we found a combination. Also, it is uh, the the best alone or combination is almost the same as you can see in the topmost graph. I'm not going into the data at present. Uh, so storage. So you can see for three hours also the mortality does not drop much. The uppermost graph shows the MSP. And uh, so then we did some other assays like uh, spectrophotometric assays, and we did some uh, like other things. we also raised the antibody against that protein in rabbit and we worked on the antibody specificity with as western blotting then we do tissue specificity we found that other than blood testis has the highest amount of this protein blood is the maximum but then comes testis so it is from blood it is going to testis to do the function so then uh, we did we found out at different levels of cell membrane cytosol etc what is happening or not uh then time scan or time uh, study was done time course was done and to find out how is it working the antibody and we so people asked okay you are trying antibody antibody is causing agglutination and it is causing uh, uh, this mortality uh, uh, reduction so we showed with papen digested antibody you no know, that monomer antibody can also reduce the you know, mortality so it's uh, really if you block the protein it will reduce mortality so here you can see agglutination with the help of antibody so this is a higher concentration of antibody if you use they will agglutinate because the antibody has two hands okay and it can catch two uh, it can always catch two uh, proteins in two different cells and they can agglutinate uh, the cells we also did some uh, agglutination assay and we did some uh, localization assay so it's on it's on the or at in coda cell you will find everywhere in the in the uh, sperm membrane then we did some special localization with confocal study we found out okay so as maturing it is going towards the acrosomal region towards the head okay and with elisa we also we tried to find out yeah, it's, it's really working uh, you need not jam your head with all this data we can we can discuss it part by part some other time maybe but just try to understand how, the, how do you approach our research then we with the antibody we also tried in vitro fertilization and found yeah that the antibody if you put in uh, like 1 to 20 uh, like 50 dilution it is causing inhibition of fertilization we tried it in mice so our protein is species non specific it is found in all animals it is can be used in all animals so from goat can be goat protein can be used in human no problem okay uh, if you can just protect it from the antigen uh, uh, i mean the reaction if the allergic reaction is can be prevented with immunosuppression or something so you can see over here so then we did some other studies to comparing our instrument so i had to join my previous project and this project for my phd so i used this protein in my instrument and just found out how the mortality increment goes and etc so it also has uh, application areas in infertility clinics and uh, like uh, animal conservation laboratories or anywhere for sample storage uh, in cryopreservation or anywhere it can be used so this go this was published in 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 infertility and sterility one of the most renowned journal of uh, reproduction and it was taken as a global medical discovery in the global medical discovery website and it was taken as a 
as a as a as a as a protein which can come up as a drug in future so it was listed in the global medical discovery so that's all about my talk so just for two minutes i will show what i did in my uh, during my postdoctoral days in my postdoctoral days in the initial postdoctoral again my subject changed i was into reproduction initially i was into instrument development so that helped in getting my first postdoctoral work in Taiwan, where they were devising an instrument. This is the Changang uh, Hospital where I worked in the very uh, beginning. Uh, so it's a 500 OT hospital. Okay, so there is a rehabilitation center where I used to do my research initially for first one year. They wanted this is my supervisor over there, Dr. Yu Cheng Pei. We devised an instrument that can you know do the hand-eye coordination and that can help out in stroke patient rehabilitation. So we devised the instrument, we designed it, we devised it. Um, uh, this will take another full, uh, maybe one hour to talk about these things. I'm not going to details of this. Yeah, but we devised this instrument. And uh, so lots of, you know, MATLAB software, etc., came into this. Uh, although I'm not a MATLAB person. So MATLAB person did it. I just told what to do, uh, what can be done. Okay, so we did all kind of hand-eye coordination work through the software and found out that, okay, and this was published uh, in a journal called Sensors. Okay, and there were lots of uh, people working in that. My next research was in Tangan University, Taiwan, wherein Dr. P uh, on, uh, on Dr. Yu Cheng Pei, uh, Dr. Pino Yang's lab, I worked. So I completely shifted into molecular biology after that, into cell cycle regulation. Because reproductive biology, you need to know about cell cycle regulation. Okay, so I worked with uh, FLJ25439 and CEF55 knockout. We also developed CEF55 knockout mice. So this is my knockout mice that I developed, the smaller one. It had a lot of good phenotypes uh, and uh, which, you know, it has a small brain. It has the frontal lobe is gone. The cerebellum has increased in size. It has a hunchback. It cannot move its hind leg. It has muscle problem. It, it lives only 21 days, whole lot of things. But the same single knockout is similar to the normal uh, control mouse, wild type mouse. So we did this and we did all kind of uh, studies of different organs of the body. We found out spleen and thymus gets too, too small. The reproductive system is completely underdeveloped and not developed, you can call it. The, the ovary and the testis, uh, they become very, very small. And we did all kind of uh, studies with, uh, you know, embryonic fibroblasts just to show the knockout has really happened, okay, in different organs and etc with the, doing the reverse transcripted PCR, okay? And uh, so lots of uh, these phenotypes were shown, balancing problems of lifespan, proportional to autism. So we did all kind of cell biology studies with, uh, for, for the CEF55 and FLJ 25439 co-localization, et cetera, at different phases of the cell cycle, et cetera. I'm not discussing all these things in this particular lecture. That's to show you and to inspire you. Don't make a like a mind block that okay, I have studied physiology, I will do only this type of work. I can do only this. You can do any type of work. It does not matter what you want to do, you can just do. And that does not mean you will have to say I mean you don't do other things in life. You also do all kind of enjoyment. In Taiwan, we played lots of cricket and things and everything. It doesn't matter, you do everything. Um, and you also do uh, things uh, that are uh, that comes up from your studies. Okay, so lots of SIRA transfection and uh, kind of all kind of works were done. Uh, so we kind of uh, developed uh, this. Uh, uh, I mean, co-localized these two proteins, found out their function, got a knockout mice developed in our lab. So its work was published in Cell Cycle, and. Uh, so I will acknowledge uh, that is kind of finishes the my research related talk. So I acknowledge all my lab mates in IICB in Taiwan and also uh, uh, the other people who have helped me in my research work. And uh, so presently, just for give me a one minute, I would say presently I'm in Amity University, Noida, in Amity Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences. And uh, so MS, BSc, M Medical Physiology, MSc Medical Physiology. And PhD in physiology is taught over there. And uh, Dr. Aparna Sarkar is our head. You can see the, the uh, email ID and the phone number and our 
our institute website given over here so you can you can know about our institute we do teach physiology as well as we do uh, like have research lab presently so i have developed a research lab uh, in in MIT presently molecular reproductive physiology laboratory with the help of the grant from acrb and uh, it was basically I'm, I'm glad to announce that it was inaugurated yesterday by professor bc das our dean uh, professor bhudev uh, chandra das uh, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk on this podium and i hope if you have any question you can come forward um, uh, and i hope i could inspire you to to some extent at least thank you thank you so much well, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Shudipto. It was really an en enlightening uh, talk. And I think you are a live example of the collaborative research work as a physiologist, which you have carried out throughout your career. And uh, I'm sure that our students, our teachers, our academicians, researchers have been motivated by the kind of work that you have uh, you know, delivered in your talk. And uh, thank you once again. And I, I don't think we have any questions in the chat box. I, and again, once again, they are showered with uh, compliments. And your talk was extremely lucid and simple so that everybody could understand what, you know, how uh, 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 how uh, reproductive physiology in the field of reproductive physiology material size can be applied to uh, improve. Uh, Dr. Mosham, I would like to say something to the students right. that, yes. you know, in our times also, we used to you know, not ask questions. We used to sit in the back bench, sometimes gossip also. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yes. true. Uh, and when the, when the podium, when the auditorium is dark, we go back, stay back, stay back seat and just talk. Okay. <laughs> or maybe sleep. Yeah, it's true. But I would ask you, tell you people, don't feel shy go forward ask questions then only physiology will go forward okay go forward ask questions let the world laugh at you let the world laugh at you let them laugh do well with that laughing you just come up ask your question whatever it, it may be a nonsense question but please do ask let people laugh at you because you have your own perspective of asking the question you ask then answer comes good answer doesn't come still good okay so thank you sir once again and uh, so with this uh, we have come to the end of uh, this morning session the scientific session of this webinar and uh, to start with the next session i would like to uh, ask uh, uh, dr onkun sina to uh, chair the next session which, which will be the session of oral presentation delivered by research scholars uh, from the Chetinard uh, Institute of uh, Academy of Research. So, uh, sir, it is over to you now. Okay, thank you, sir. Am I audible? Am I audible, sir? Mosum, sir? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, a very good afternoon to all of you. I welcome all the participants and the delegates in this first session of oral presentation. I'm Dr. Ankan Sinha, working as an assistant professor in physical education, government degree college, Dharmanagar, North Tripura. Today, I got the responsibility of chairing one of the sessions, which will be consisting of two wonderful and informative presentations given by, which will be given by the budding researchers, or what would I say, the upcoming medical scientists of our nation in their respective fields. So before calling them for their deliberation, I would like to give some outline about the whole session. So the session will be consisting of two lectures, as I've uh, said earlier, of 20 minutes each means both the lectures will be of 20 will be the duration of 20 minutes and after completing the first session first lecture there will be interaction between the participants and the presenter in the form of question answer sessions which we will get from the participants through their messages or maybe through their text in the comment section during the presentation that we will uh, have in the interaction session after completing the first lecture 
our first interaction session we will have we will move towards the second lecture which will be followed by one more interaction session between the participants and the uh, respective presenter in the same way and at the last i will briefly summarize the whole session that's all so without wasting time without any delay i would like to call upon the first presenter i would like to call upon the first presenter of this session mr ganeshan jokimani he has completed his msc in medical biotechnology from chettinad academy of research and education chennai currently he is pursuing his phd in medical biotechnology at the chettinad academy of research and education he is working in the field of stem cells and cancer biology and have published 16 numbers of international research review papers and book chapters he is going to deliver his lecture on molecular characterization of human umbilical cord derived from mesenchymal stem cells conditioned medium and exosomes so i would like to request him to carry with his uh, continue with his uh, first presentation so please sir you can carry on yeah there is share option so go to the share option where you have yeah. to click share screen again uh, twice in different stages after that you can go for entire screen hello am i audible yes sir yes sir you are audible yeah uh, there was a network glitch sorry for the delay no problem sir meanwhile i will i would like to convey one message to the participants please text your queries in the comment section so that we can ask the same questions in the during the interaction session with your presenter but the only thing is that we will select only few questions due to the time constraint so thank you yes sir it is visible yeah thank you okay sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Ganesh Jyotimani, doing PhD in Department of Medical Biotechnology, Chettinad Academy of Research and Education, Chennai. So, the title for today's topic is the molecular characterization of human umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stem cells, condition medium, and exosomes. So, basically, mesenchymal stem cells are the multipotent stem cells that can differentiate into variety of cell types, such as the osteoblast, chondrocyte, myocytes, and adipocytes. So these mesenchymal stem cells to have tremendous therapeutic potential because of their multi lineage and self renewal properties. So these mesenchymal stem cells can be isolated from various sources such as the bone marrow, placenta, amniotic fluid, amniotic membrane, tumor umbilical cord, etc. But considering bone marrow is considered as a main source for the isolation of mesenchymal stem cells, but the number, the but the population density of the mesenchymal stem cells decreases when the the person's age increases. so this led us to find out for the alternative source for the isolation of mesenchymal stem cells so in the alternative sources we have found that we have choose the umbilical cord for the isolation of mesenchymal stem cells so the one of the main advantage for the uh, isolation of mesenchymal stem cells from the human umbilical cord is that it involves a less invasive process compared to any other sources because the human umbilical cord after the delivery the human umbilical cord has been discarded as a biological waste so it involves a less invasive process and secondly secondly this isolated mesenchymal stem cells from the human umbilical cord since it's 
since it's a missing from stem cells, it has very low HLA2 antigens and MHA class 1 molecules. So with the less HLA2 antigens and uh, MHA class 1 molecules, they have a very less immune restriction property and that thereby it gives us a greater uh, therapeutic potential. So the, these mesenchymal stem cells expresses growth factors, cytokines, chemokines and certain non-regulatory RNAs. So these molecules are the factors that has a uh, immunosuppressive anti-tumor and migratory properties and that can modulate the host immune and cellular responses. So and the uh, these secreted soluble factors include the TGF beta, uh, PDG2, PDG, PEG2, IL10, etc. These are the non uh, inflammatory mediators secreted in the tumor microenvironment and that are simil similar to the secreted during the tissue damage and thought to involve recruiting MSS to the tumor sites. So, during, the, uh, in, during an injury or in, uh, during an injury, the injured tissues secreted the immuno, immunomodulated complexes. So, the, this complexes triggers the mesenchymal stem circulatory mesenchymal stem cells in the blood and thereby it triggers the mesenchymal stem cells for the tissue healing process the same way in the tumor in the cancerous tissue these cancerous tissues secretes secretes the uh, inflammatory mediators that attracts the mesenchymal stem cells and thereby it forms the tumor microenvironment in the niche so the mesenchymal stem cells uh, releases several non-coding rnas and the anti-cancer molecules via the exosomes uh, including tumor necrosis factor, uh, tumor TNF related apoptosis inducing ligands, interferons, etc. So, interestingly, numerous studies have found that these stem cell derived exosomes contain the larger uh, number, large number of small molecules that can be transferred from one cell to another, including the lipids, proteins, mRNAs, transfer RNAs, long coding RNAs such as the microRNA and mitochondrial DNA. So, over research suggests that the over 150 microRNAs and 80 specific proteins have been identified through and studied thoroughly to transfer the bioactive molecules to perform the physiological and pathological process such as the organism development, epigenetic regulations, immunoregulations, etc. So, uh, in my work, what firstly what we have done is that I have isolated the nascent chemistry stem cells from the human umbilical cord. So, firstly, the human umbilical cord was collected from the OBG department, Office of Objectics and Gynecology Department from the City North Hospital Research Institute after getting the informed consent from the patient. So after the delivery, the human and umbilical cord was, uh, after the delivery, the placenta and the umbilical cord has been discarded as a biological waste. From that, the around two to three centimeters of the human umbilical cord was cut. And this umbilical cord tissue was dissected uh, by manually and the arteries and the vein was removed uh, man by manually using the sterile forceps. So, uh, since the arteries and veins are the major source of cellular contamination, such as the hematopoietic, because it contains the hematopoietic stem cell population. So, these arteries and veins have been removed and these explants have been mixed into smaller fragments and have been cultured in the stem cell, uh, stem cell uh, culture medium, stem cell specific culture medium. So, after the seven days of incubation at the uh, 37 degrees Celsius, these ML, uh, explants started releasing the fibroblastic cells. And at the, at the day of 28th day, we will get a confluent colonies of fibroblastic cells. So after getting the fibroblastic cells, what we have, we have done is that we have characterized the uh, fibroblastic cells because till now we have got the fibroblastic cells, but we have to prove whether it is the mesenchymal stem cells or not. So for that, we have gone for the characterization, uh, characterization of the fibroblastic cells. So the, uh, the one of the main property of the stem cells is that it has it highly expresses stem cell markers and secondly it is positive for the cluster differentiation of for CD73, CD105 and CD90 markers and it is negative for CD31, 45 and CD117 markers. So in in the the cells that we have got we, when we went for the qPCR analysis for the uh, stem cell markers we have we have got the highly high the, these fibroblastic cells highly express the SOX9, OX4, and nano uh, pro, uh, mRNA, mRNA expressions. And uh, as well as, it is strongly positive for the CD73, CD105, and weakly positive for CD90. Whereas it completely lagged, or it's com almost completely lagged the expression of CD31, CD45, and CD117, which shows that the cells that we isolated are the pure population of mesenchymal stem cells. Next, we have assessed the in vitro differentiation property. So another property of the stem cells is that it has to differentiate into multiple lineages. 
So here, what we have done is that we have cultured the isolated isolated fibroblast in the appropriate culture medium. For example, for osteoblast, we have used the osteoblast culture osteoblast culture supplement uh, supplemented medium. So that in this, we found that the isolated fibroblast has transformed. I mean, as differentiated into adipocytes, osteocytes, and chondrocytes. Here we can see on figure A2, we found we can clearly see that the the differentiated uh, adipocytes as the lipid lipid vacuoles that are that has been strained with oil rodeo and figure B2 we can clearly see the calcium deposition uh, the, uh, which shows that the stem cells have been differentiated into osteocytes and figure uh, C3 we can clearly see that the differentiated uh, cells attain the purple color and uh, and the size also enlarged. This is because the chondrocytes produce a special type of protein called the agrican. So that take up the strain and uh, it becomes enlarged. This shows that the isolated cells are the population of mesenchymal stem cells and the uh, population of mesenchymal stem cells. So next, we, ha we have isolated mesenchymal stem cells. So then what we have done is that we need to check till what passage we can use the cells for our study purpose. So for that, we have used this. Uh, we have studied the cell cycle analysis. In this, we have cultured the cells in three different passages that that uh, p2 p5 and p10 uh, so p2 is the passage number 2 passage number 5 and passage number 10, 6 uh, sorry passage number 10 so in this we found that the majority of the cells in passage 10 the majority of the cells are the are in the g1 phase of the cell cycle this shows that when this when the passage number increases when we repeatedly split the cells sepulture the cells so the cells lose their self renewal property so when the cell loses the cell renewal property, it remained in the G1 phase, and it is and it does not move to S phase and M phase, mitotic uh, phase in the cell cycle regulation. Whereas in P2, it is evenly distributed, which is uh, which we can easily see from the uh, graph. So after uh, doing the cell cycle analysis, then we have gone for, uh, we have gone for the uh, collection of condition medium. So after after isolating the mesenchymal stem cells. Then we will be culturing these stem cells in the serum free environment. So, in the serum free uh, environment, these stem cells, isolated stem cells secrete certain growth factors, chemokines, cytokines, etc. And that was screened, that we have screened using the ELISA and as well as we have performed the LCMS. So, first we will show the ELISA data. So, here what we have done is that we are, after getting the condition medium, we have con uh, concentrated the protein present in the condition medium using a 10 kDa filter. and we have estimated the protein concentration using the Bradford, uh, Bradford assay, and we have loaded the uh, uh, like uh, we have loaded uh, like around the five uh, uh, sorry twenty nanogram per microliter for the ELISA experiment, and we have seen the cytokine profiling. Here we found that the expression of the uh, cytokine such as the IL six, MCP one, TGF beta one, IL IL eight. GCSF, MAP one B, ITAC was found to be relatively very higher, which we can see from the uh, graph. And as well as the expression level of the GMCSF, IL four, Rantas, IL ten, in, uh, interferon gamma were relatively very less. The expression was there, but the expression level was relatively very less. So this data suggests that the mesenchymal stem cells highly express the uh, inflammatory cytokines, uh, inflammatory cytokines that are that play a major role in the tumor micro environment when interacting with the interacting with the uh, tumor cells in a cancer condition so next what i have done is that the the concentrated protein that firstly i have run the sds phase and after uh, doing the sds phase i have exhausted the bands and done for gone for the lcms proteome analysis so after doing the lcms ms proteome analysis uh, profiling i have got the 214 uh, proteins i have identified 214 proteins uh, present in the condition medium not only 214 i have got the spectrum of 214 proteins that are highly present so the minor uh, spectrum was not visible uh, in the lcms ms profile so these uh, uh, 214 pro proteins i have done the gene ontology uh, and protein protein interaction networking so to identify to identify the protein protein interaction as well as the major major proteins that uh, are involved in that are involved in the uh, regulation of uh, tumor growth or the tumor suppression so the so gene ontology for the lcms profile shows that the majority of protein that i have uh, that i found uh, from the lcms ms profile shows that the majority of proteins that are involved in the uh, binding activity 
that is very evident from the uh, gene ontology uh, molecular functions this gene ontology was done using the panther uh, uh, online server so in the uh, panther online server the, I, we found gene molecular function analysis shows that the majority of protein are involved in the binding process and the when we when we classify the proteins based on their uh, functions uh, the highly significant the most significant proteins that plays a role in that uh, uh, msc secreted uh, uh, condition medium is that involves the cell addition molecules so this shows that the msc it, which which again proves that these are the proteins that are secreted by the MSCs uh, because the MSCs are very much adhesive in nature because they highly express the CD, CDH1 uh, protein, I mean e cadet proteins, uh, which helps in the cell adhesion process. So, uh, and thirdly, we, uh, when we, we have run the gene ontology for biological process, here also we found that the majority of proteins that are uh, involved in the bi biological adhesion, biological regulation, and cellular processing process and it is found to be highly significant so these level of graphs are graphs have been uh, arranged of based on their significance levels so next uh, after doing the lcms ims analysis then we have gone for the exosome isolation from the protein uh, to characterize what all the microRNAs that is present in the exosomes so here what we have done is that they uh, after isolating mesenchymal stem cells i have cultured the uh, stem cells in the exosome depleted uh, uh, stem cell uh, cultured medium and uh, during the culture process the in uh, during the culture process for the three days these mesenchymal stem cells secrete the extracellular vesicles into the medium and this medium was collected in centrifuge at 4500 rpm for 30 minutes and then uh, using the exposed exosome, exosome isolation reagent i have isolated the exosomes and uh, i have determined the uh, size of the exosomes uh, using the dls dynamic light spectrum and we found i found that uh, the uh, uh, isolated exosomes are in the range of 93 uh, nanometer in diameter. So then, what I have done is that the, I have profiled the uh, human umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stem cell microRNAs, that is uh, microRNAs, as well as I have profiled the microRNAs that are pres that are being secreted out of the stem cells also via the exosomes. So first, uh, this graph shows the uh, mRNA profile of uh, human umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stem cells. Here we found that the uh, microRNA such as the microRNA 21, 125B, uh, microRNA 29, 27, etc., are to be highly present in the uh, mesenchymal stem cells. And the mesenchymal exosomes also, we found that the microRNA 21, 29, 146A were found to be highly expressed in exosomes. So, so, but there are some microRNAs that have been differentially expressed in the uh, stem cells as well as the exosomes. So what I have done is that after screening the 84 microRNAs from the uh, stem cells as well as the exosomes, uh, we have got a greater interest that there are few microRNAs that have been secreted out into the uh, cellular compartment. So what we have done is that we have done the gene ontology for the exosome profiled microRNAs. I mean the microRNAs that have been secreted outside of the cellular compartment. So here, after uh, this gene ontology was done in the MirNet uh, tool, it's on and server. So after doing the gene ontology, uh, for the fir firstly we have done the functional enrichment analysis. Here we found that the majority of microRNAs, I mean uh, out of 84 microRNAs, out, out of 84 microRNAs, we have selected the top 35 highly expressed microRNAs for the gene ontology purpose. In that, we found that the majority of microRNAs that are involved in this cellular death process, uh, which uh, which corresponds to the upper process also. So here we found that the firstly cell death, and secondly we found that uh, the adipocytic differentiation, T cell differentiation, aging, the regulation of stem cells, etc. And there are few microRNAs that also have a, a slightly significant uh, role in regulating the oncogenesis also, and these are classified into onco microRNAs. So after that, uh, after doing the function enrichment analysis, we have done the uh, cake pathway analysis also. Here we found that the micro the microRNAs are classified based on the their interaction with the target genes uh, that are involved in the uh, significant pathways. Here we found that the majority of microRNAs that 
targets the P53 signaling pathway and it's found to be highly significant. And uh, other, and there are major uh, microorganisms that target the pathways in the cancer that we can clearly see from the graph. Here, uh, the almost all the values are highly, highly statistically significant also. And then we have done the biological process analysis. So here, the, it is classified based on the biological process. So here also, we found that the microRNAs that target the genes which regulates the cellular prolifer proliferation process. So the majority of genes that uh, regulate the uh, the majority of genes that regulate the uh, biological uh, cellular proliferation process have been targeted by the uh, potent microRNAs that have been found that we have been found in the screen in the exosomes. And as well as the react reactive analysis shows that the these microRNAs regulates the uh, not transcription translation factors, oncogene induced senescence, uh, intrinsic pathways of apoptosis, uh, signaling by the notch P uh, and the PAP3 activated uh, AKD signaling pathway, etc. So, so this study shows that the few microRNAs that are abundantly found in the extra, so extracellular vesicles, but this expression was little lesser compared to the uh, compared to the uh, cellular domain. I mean the um, umbilical cord or missing cells. So the, that that uh, that was an interesting finding that we have uh, found from this study, and it we have to work on to it, and we have to elucidate why these. For example, the microRNAs such as MAR 146A, MAR 146B, uh, MAR 372, 124, and 215 has been secreted outside into the uh, has been secreted outside into the extracellular vesicles, whereas the in the cellular compartment the expression of these microRNAs have been found low. That we, needs to be elucidated in the future experiments. And secondly, the investigating the role of these abundant exosomal microRNAs in terms of tumor promotion and uh, suppression might provide us a knowledge about the molecular interplay between the mesenchymal stem cell and cancer cells in the tumor microenvironment, cell cell communication, and epithelial mesenchymal transition. Also, interestingly, several hundred folds higher levels of microRNA 121 was found in both exosomes as well as the uh, mesenchymal stem cells. The uh, and several researchers states that the MR121 actively involves the tumor progression invasion metastasis process. And uh, to our knowledge, surprisingly, we found that the MR134 that has been highly exposed in the missing stem cells and uh, stem cell kind of exosomes, uh, these are involved in the tumor suppression activity by blocking the oncogenic pathways in the cancer. For uh, the, the major pathway that it targets is found to be the KRAS P3K EGF uh, signaling path cascade, where it has a direct binding site for the KRAS and P3K EGF genes. So as it is involved in the tumor suppression activity, it is reported to be a down-regulated microRNA in almost all cancers, especially in colon cancers. So still the role of unique microRNA in cancer progression and tumor suppression is dependent on the cell type of cancer it is associated with. In detail, the molecular target of these microRNAs were differ from cell type to cell type. So still uh, after this, we have to we, we have shown our interest to work on a particular microRNA that we'll be doing in our lab in the future uh, studies. Uh, so we are going to work on the microRNA 134 because it has been highly expressed and it targets the ca cancer. Uh, I mean the oncogenes in the colon cancer. So we'll be uh, particularly focused on a particular microRNA uh, for our future uh, studies in our uh, in our laboratory. So these are my total publications during my PhD uh, uh, process. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for giving me opportunity uh, to present in the nice seminar, wonderful seminar. And thank you so much. So thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, you can stop stop your sharing sir okay just stop the sharing okay thank you so sir uh, we have completed your lecture portion but for the interaction session there is one question asked by balram das that you can easily read read it here on yeah. the screen yeah so uh, actually, the MAR one, yeah. So, how MAR twenty one five P engaged in the tumor metastasis as as asked by the Balram Das sir. So, this micro RNA twenty one five P, uh, this micro RNA twenty one five P actually it also acts as an oncogene, which means that this basically micro or micro RNAs are the regulatory RNAs, doesn't code for any protein. So, this micro RNAs targets the any mRNA molecule and that will decrease the expression of protein. 
So this micronic MAR one twenty one five P it targets the tumor suppressor proteins uh, that are involved in the uh, caspase cascade. Uh, in the mitochondrial domain so since it degrades the caspase protein i mean it has a direct binding site for for the caspase protein i mean caspase mar it degrades the caspase protein and thereby it promotes the tumor progression and metastasis so that's the reason so thank you i i hope it is clear to you balram sir uh, so thank you sir uh, all our showing their their interest towards your lecture that they are saying that thank they you, are, thank you so uh, much. that it was a nice experience to hear you and uh, really it was treat to hear you sir so uh, as we are not having much more questions from the participant side so i would like to give you heartfelt thanks for accepting our request and uh, delivering your sharing your information and knowledge with us and our participants sir so thank you thank once you. again sir thank you thank you so much for giving me the opportunity thank you so much thank you sir. now we are moving towards the second lecture of this session the first session of oral presentation which will be given by mrs sarubala malaya Perumal, she has completed her MSc Biotechnology from Women's Christian College, Chennai. At present, she is pursuing her PhD at Chettinad Academy of Research and Education. She is having seven years of experience in the field of stem cells biology, stem cell biology, and cancer biology. She has contributed to ten research and review papers in national and international level. She is going to deliver her lecture on role of microRNA in colon cancer progression in HCT116 cell lines. So without any delay, I would like to request her to carry on with her uh, lecture. So please, madam. And meanwhile, I will. I would like to ask the participant. Please don't wait for the last moment. You can have. You can place your query on time. Okay, so that we can ask that questions to the presenters. Thank you. Madam, you have to share the screen first. On share screen option, you will get one more. Twice you have to click the share screen, step by step. Then go for entire screen. Yes. It is OK. Madam, actually, we are not able to hear you, madam. Your presentation is visible to us, but your uh, means audio is not come to us, means is not audible. Yes. It's not me still.
मैडम यू नीड टू गो फॉर स्लाइड शो Hello, am I audible now, sir? Now it is okay, madam. It is audible, but uh, you have to go for slide show. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Ah. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. And this is Sarubala Malay Permal, uh, from a uh, PhD research scholar from Chettinad Academy of Research and Education. So today I'll be uh, presenting a topic on. Role of microRNA one to two in proliferation and migration of colon cancer cell line. So, what is colon cancer? So it is basically. Excuse me, madam. Yes. And it is. You need to go for full screen. It is not. It is quite smaller in size. Yeah, it's. I uh, put a uh, slideshow only now. It's. But here it is not happening. uh madam uh, please go for entire screen that then you will be it will be yeah, easier for you yeah this is actually entire screen okay is it now visible it is visible but it is in smaller size means not on full screen might be because of the network it is very delayed i guess no problem it it will be it will work it is okay you can continue madam okay ah, okay okay shall i proceed sir yes yeah okay for suppose what is colon cancer basically it is colon cancer begins with the development of the precancer polyp from the lining of the colon day by day this polyps these small small polyps will develop into a cancer so this risk factors commonly include genetic environmental and lifestyle related factors like uh, people more than 50 years of age people who are addicted to alcohol and tobacco and uh, people who are lack physical exercise the uh, low fiber diet history of the family everything matters for the colon cancer so these are the risk factors and symptoms include diarrhea constipation a uh, bloating and lump and pain in the abdomen abdomen and rectal bleeding these are some of the basic symptoms for the colorectal cancer so this colon cancer can be divided into four stages where stage 0 and 1 with the tumor has developed inside the lining of the colon but have not spread outside in the stage 2 and 3 the colon has grown outside the uh, colon and spread into lymph nodes in the colon 4 in the stage 4 the colon has spread into other parts of the body so here in this study the survival analysis revealed that the significantly better survival uh, i mean the people who are less of less than 40 years of age have significantly better survival than the other likewise the patients who are non metastatic and the females uh, interestingly the females are have more survival rate than the males so here in the screening of the colorectal cancer the uh, basic screening test includes the fecal occult blood testing fecal dna ct colonography sigmoidoscopy and colonoscope so these are the screening methods for uh, colorectal cancer and for the treatment options first doctor will decide doctor will check in which stage you are in uh, and he uh, analyze his location size and uh, stages of the colon cancer for the initial two stages stage 0 and 1 mostly surgery will be the uh, treatment and for about uh, the second stage the, there will be combination of the chemotherapy and the targeted therapy for the chemotherapy uh, uh, region i mean uh, agents like fluorouracil oxaliplatin will be used as a uh, treatment uh, medicine and uh, there are many biological uh, 
मैडम हेलो actually uh, the slide is not moving i think so oh in which sh- slide number first slide I it is uh, itself in first slide only oh now it is moving yes yes now it is moving i am in yes, ninth sir. slide now <laughs> so it is better to uh, means uh, start from uh, second or third slide again if if possible Yeah, yeah, sure. Now it's moving, right? Yes, yes. Okay, I will start from first. Now I'm in second slide. Can you just check? It is second slide. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll start from first. That's not a problem. Okay. So basically, colon cancer. I'll just start. Give it. Uh, give an introduction. The colon cancer. Yes, it is showing in the ninth. The ninth one, I think, it is showing. Not the second. Now one. again ninth. Now it's second. I came. But in, in our screen, I am seeing. We are seeing only the ninth one, not the second one. You have changed, but uh, it has not come into display uh, in our platform. Yeah, now it is come. Now it is come. Yeah, carry on, madam. It's come now. Okay. If slide is not changing, please let me know before like proceeding. okay okay so colon cancer uh, is a uh, basically colon cancer begins with the development of the precancerous pro- polyps from the lining of the colon so day by day what this polyps will do they form into a cancer uh, colon cancer so risk factors commonly include genetic environmental and lifestyle related factors and uh, these are so here in this slide you can see some of the risk factors like uh, people who are older than 50 years of age people who are ad- addicted to alcohol and tobacco uh, who have la- lack of physical exercise and who take a very low amount of fiber diet a uh, uh, personal history everything matters for the colorectal cancer so here here you can see some of the symptoms of the basic symptoms of the colorectal cancer like diarrhea constipation bloating a lump and and pain in the abdomen and rectal bleeding these are some of the basic symptoms of the colorectal cancer and loss of appetite weight loss everything and this here uh, in this colorectal cancer can be divided into four stages basically z- stage 0 and 1 where the colon has developed inside the lining but not have spread outside and in the 2 it have gone grown outside the colon the three it have spread to lymph nodes the four it have metastasized means it spread it to other part of, parts of the body so in this study they have analyzed the survival analysis i mean survival age for the, all the colon cancer patient the survival analysis revealed that patients who are younger than 40 years of age have a better survival curve now i think it is not again moving in which slide sir it is still in the second second slide colon cancer only oh madam uh, better to uh, stop the sharing and again start with entire screen step by step then it will be better i think so okay i'll Once... stop and i'll ha uh, ha yes yes yeah. stop sharing then go for share screen again share screen then there is a uh, screen sharing tips and at the bottom of that page share screen again and here they have mentioned entire screen for that yeah. click on click, click on that screen then the share option will be automatically become blue So yeah. then go for that share go for that share then it will work i think so yes now uh, now, now go for ha pe- huh, yes now, now it is okay yes 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 now it is perfectly okay, okay. Hmm. so shall i start it from first or uh, no 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 i'll, no need. Be- I'll begin Third. with the um, survival analysis okay okay madam hmm. huh? okay Thank you.
so coming to the survival analysis, it's revealed that our patients, I mean, younger than 40 years of age have a better survival rate. And interestingly, our females have a better survival rate than the males. And patients who are non-metastatic disease or have also have a better survival rate. So these, these, uh, this slide is showing some uh, basic screening uh, technique for the colorectal cancer, like fecal object testing, DNA, fecal DNA, uh, CT colonography, sigmoidoscopy, and colonoscopy are some of the basic screening methods for the colorectal cancer. So here the treatment option. First, doctor will uh, analyze in which stage you are in and the disease, uh, which size it is and lesions. He will analyze it and then he will suggest you a treatment. So the, basically for stage 0 and 1, uh, the surgery is a treatment. Like they will remove the polyp from the site and you will be free of cancer. Like after the stage 3, there will be a combination of the chemotherapy and the targeted therapy. Chemotherapy like fluorouracil, oxaliplatin, irinaticon, everything comes under chemotherapy. And monoclonal anti antibodies like cetuximab, bevaxizumab are some of the uh, uh, receptor targeted uh, molecules which is, which, can, which is used as adjuvant therapy for the colon cancer. So these are some of the advanced therapy for the color, colorectal cancer available. And here, now coming to the microRNA, these are small, these are small uh, like in advanced uh, 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 techniques. There, in the targeted therapy, there is something called microRNA tar uh, targeted therapy also. So with, in continuation of that, we see what is microRNA first. What is microRNA? It's a small non-coding RNA with the length of 22 nucleo nucleotides. We, it is very critical for the normal development and variety of the bi biological process. The first microRNA was discovered in the year 1993 by Ambrose and Rukon. So these microRNAs interact with the target genes to suppress, the, suppress their expression by promoting degradation or inhibiting translation. This differentially expressed microRNA in colon cancer was first reported by Michael et al. in 2003. So these microRNAs can be divided, classified into three types, metastatic, oncogenic mRNAs, and tumor suppressor. In, from the name itself, you can understand the tumor suppressor helps the uh, tumors to suppress, uh, whereas the metastatic and the oncogene will uh, promote the tumor by uh, activating the oncogenes. So here, this slide summarizes the, some of the microRNAs which is restricted, dysregulated in the colorectal cancer. Uh, these microRNAs can also be used as a biomarkers for screening. These are some of the microRNAs which are up and down, down regulated in the colon cancer and their functions in which stage they act. So coming to microRNA one to two specifically, these are micro these microRNAs are highly expressed in liver. They are the regulator of the fatty acid metabolism. They have some anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, these uh, microRNA one to two have been reported as a tumor suppressor microRNA in the hepatocellular carcinoma, whereas they have a past positive role in Hep C disease. Means they promote the hepatitis C virus replication. These can be exposed as a biomarker in various hepatic conditions. So why I choose microRNA-122 specifically? According to the seed and soil theory, 80% of the colorectal cancer will metastasize in lung cancer. So in lung cancer, they are reported as microRNA-122 as a tumor suppressor. So what happens to the colon? Whether it can be controversially, whether this microRNA-122 can be high, uh, highly regulated or it can be suppressed in the colon cancer itself, anything is possible. So we need to check what happens in the colon cancer. So my aim and objective, the proposed study involves the aim to investigate the expression level of the microbiome wanted to in colon cancer. And the idea also comprises to inhibit and overexpress microRNA wanted to through mimic in colon cancer cell line and to investigate its role, role in regulation of, in apoptosis. So in vitro results show so this is the expansion of the cell lines. Here in the first uh, image shows the FHC. It's a normal colon cell. I mean, cell. it's not a cell line. It's a cell's primary cells, FHC, fetal, uh, fetal uh, cells. 
and HCT 116, 480 and 620 are uh, 480 and 620 are the paired uh, cell lines means uh, this uh, cells are taken from the same patients in the primary stage and also in the metastatic stage. HCT 116 is a, a different cell line. And when we analyze the uh, microRNA 1 to 2 expression in all the three cell lines, we can see that it's been drastically reduced in all the cell lines. And we overexpressed we over the microRNA 1 to 2. Uh, we overexpress the cells with microRNA 1 to 2 mimic. And uh, we can see the results. It's been 500 to 1,000 times increased in all the cell lines, except for the uh, 620. Uh, it might be because of the reason it's meta, it is in metastatic stage. So it doesn't respond well for the treatment. And proliferation assay was done with the cell counting kit, cell counting kit. And uh, we can see the proliferation have been uh, significantly reduced in the SAT 116 and 480, uh, but not in 620. That might be because of these both are the primary cell line and these are the metastatic cell line. So these are some of the gene expression, basic gene expression we have seen. Uh, AEG1, oncogene, CDK6 is a cell cycle marker, PCN is a proliferation marker, Viamentin for angiogenesis, everything. Here the results showed these oncogenes and the proliferation markers were drastically reduced in the primary cell lines. I mean, uh, drastic significantly, like for uh, 480 and HCT shows a better result than the 620. So this is the invasion assay. Uh, we check for uh, we check the transfer uh, invasion, and uh, here the 480 showed the better result. Like uh, number of uh, invaded cells is less than hmm, uh, than the SW620. That's primarily because of its it's a primary cell line. And this is the colony forming uh, assay. Here, the number of colonies were counted and graph were produced. Here also, you can see the primary cell lines like HCT and 480 had a better response of, uh, when we transfected with the mimic than the 620. I mean, the number of colonies formed were reduced in the uh, uh, treated cells than the uh, S620 cell lines. So this is a scratch assay, uh, or we can also call it as a wound deleting assay or the migration assay. So you can see uh, here that uh, after the scratch, the number of cells uh, trying to closure the wound is uh, uh, actually reduced in the transfected cell line than the uh, un I mean control. And uh, the results were significant in the primary cell lines in HCT116 HCT and 480 than in 6 620. Uh, this is a fluorescent associated cell sorting facts assay uh, here this assay we use to check the apoptotic uh, apoptotic stages of the cells the kit was used apoptosis kit was used and here you can see that in the control i mean the untransfected the um, the cells uh, only 30 percent of the cells were in the apoptosis stage whereas in the treated cells the i mean the cells treated with the microRNA one to two mimic show the increased rate of apoptosis. It's been increased up to 20 times in the treated cells, uh, in the both uh, 480 and 620. So here with the RT-PCR, we, uh, we checked for some of the markers like BAX, BCL2, CAS3, and CAS9. Here you can see BAX is also upregulated, which is positive for us. And, uh, is the immunofluorescence analysis of the AEG1. Uh, we chose AEG1 because it's one of the uh, predominant oncogene which is uh, analyzed in the, which is uh, seen in the colon cancer. So we just wanted to check what happens to this oncogene when we transfer the microRNA 1 to 2. So interestingly, you can see that AEG1 expression is very high in the uh, control cells, whereas in the transfected cells, the uh, oncogene is suppressed. So the, uh, it uh, overall, the, it says that uh, microRNA one to two transfection works. So coming to the summary, so basal microRNA expression level in colon cancer cells we found to be significantly reduced in colon cancer cells and forced expression of uh, one to two mimic 
had many fold expression so overall this microRNA 1 to 2 inhibits the proliferation potential invasion and migration of the colon cancer cell lines in vitro so this study overall is, is says that this paved the way to the development of the microRNA therapeutics in future this might be used as a combinational therapy it can give a better result if we uh, develop this therapy and uh, it can a uh, combinational therapy can also give a better results so these are the references i used and these are some of the research articles i published related to the paper so i would like to thank you uh, for giving me opportunity to present in this uh, seminar thank you thank you madam thank you uh, you can now stop your sharing yeah now the participants have enjoyed and learned a lot through this session your lecture and uh, they have asked one question from one of our colleague i think so okay. that madam first of all uh, just close the sharing stop sharing then it will be visible on your screen yeah yeah okay okay madam okay now he's asking that you can read it out also ontology or logic are more or less similar terms he's asking in the question form ontology and logic or more or less similar it, terms uh, actually dr onkon it was it, it is not a question actually some of the participants had asked this question in the chat box so mm -hmm. i had replied uh, to that question then no, let it not let it be let let it be from student side only because they may have question it may be a very very simple one but they are asking that ontology or logic um, um, both are um, more or less same or not so it may be same any other I questions uh, yes madam i didn't get the question which you are asking for I would like to request Mosum sir. Please. No, actually, this was not a question. Uh, somebody uh, asked uh, this question to the previous speaker. Uh, okay. okay. And and this is not related to the to this webinar or to this talk any uh, anyway. Uh, okay. So okay. it is uh, a question I think which has been uh, wrongly put up. So okay, 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 no problem. It was a nice presentation, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. And it was really a wonderful experience to hear you. And we will hopefully we will meet in some other platform to witness your such a means pleasant and very simple to understand your presentation in some other platform, madam. And thanks again for accepting our request. So thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, moving further. I would like to summarize the whole session in a nutshell. The first speaker explained about the mesenchymal stem cells. He explained that are multiple steromal cells that can differentiate into a variety of cells types. He expresses the mesenchymal stem cell expresses growth factors also. He also explained the isolation process of human umbilical cord after the birth of child, how to means isolate the cord. He also expressed the characterization of human umbilical cord. He presented human umbilical cord differentiation using suitable differentiation, including media. The cell cycle analysis by, by following the cytometry result was also expressed in his lecture. He also presented LCMS proteum and protein-protein interaction networking. He shows the gene ontology for LCMS profile. He also explained the isolation of exome, exosomes. Exosome characterization is also presented by him. 
miRNA profiling also presented in his lecture. He explained the interaction between the miRNA and mRNA and functional enrichment analysis. So this is about the first presentation. And lastly, in the next uh, second presentation, Madam explained that how does the what is the cause of colon cancer? What are the different risk factors for colon cancer? Different stages of colon cancer? Who has the better chances of survival with colon cancer? She explained or presented the screening of colorative cancer. She also presented the advanced therapy or we can say the treatment of colorative cancer in the form of surgery, maybe chemotherapy, maybe targeted therapy or sometimes micro RNA therapy also. She explained what is micro RNA. She also explained micro RNA that serves as both tumor suppressor and oncogenes has been shown to be an additional hallmark in colon carcinogenesis. So this is about her presentation and these two was uh, means uh, in all aspects it was the complete presentation and I hope the uh, the participants learned a lot through these two presentations. Now without any delay we are already late that's why without any delay I would like to call upon one of the coordinator of this program Dr. Suman Odhikari sir to present his vote of thanks and through this vote of thanks we will end up the day one over here. So please sir. Sir, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Respected, respected principal, sir, government degree college, Dharmonagar, honorable resource person, respected colleague, my dear participant. It gives me immense pleasure to pose a vote of thanks to our eminent resource person and invited speakers and oral presenters. I would like to thank Professor Onudo Shaha, Dr. Shudan Devnath, who spared their time from their busy schedule to grace this event. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Antonio Gomes and Professor Shurito Shaha for their very interesting lecture. This kind of webinar is a ideal platform to share knowledge and thoughts among the students as well as teaching community. I would also like to thank to our uh, oral presenter Mr. Ganeshan and Mr. and uh, Mrs. Uh, Saruballa for their very interesting lectures. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to our participant uh, who chose to live with us and attend this webinar with great enthusiasm and make it a grand success. Thank you all. Namaskar.